Welcome to John Harden High School. I'm David Gary. Along with me is Drew Bernardi and Jesse Bird. And to quote the wise philosopher oh, Turtle Man, cool. live action. Drew, uh, we've got a couple of teams that uh, have had different levels of success this season. John Harden has, has uh, had some success in some games, struggled with themselves in some others. And uh, this Valley football team picked up their first win of the season last week. Yeah, they did. Uh, tell you what, it's a couple of teams, like you said, going in different directions. John Harden, it's the same district. John Harden three and four, Valley only one and five, and uh, you're talking about a team in John Harden that has shown the ability to be a good team. They've put up some points on the board, but they're a team that struggles sometimes on offense, that can struggle sometimes on defense as compared to a Valley team that seems to struggle at everything. Still plenty of good seats available on this one. Uh, this, uh, I, I'm not sure a lot of people knew that this game was taking place. We've been here before. Some of the crosstown rivalries have, you know, filled up the seats pretty quickly, but uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's a little bit of a different feel here. It's uh, not, not a huge turnout, but I think people will come in a little bit later, maybe once the lights kick on uh, fully and illuminate the field. Uh, it is a district contest. I, I say it and I joke in the first few weeks of every season that these games don't count, and this one counts. It has to do uh, whether or not you play a game at home in that first round or if you go about 300 miles away. So, yeah, they count. You want to win your district games. Yeah, you do. You know, you definitely want to set yourself up good for the playoffs. Um, like you said, these are the games that count. They're not as important. You know, maybe not as important towards getting that playoff seating as some of the earlier games, but you definitely want to win every game. One thing, if you look at the rosters of the two teams, uh, John arden has got the depth factor. They they just got a larger roster. They got more people available at different skill positions. Uh, this Valley team, they don't have too many more people than the 11 they have on either side of the ball. And that really that wears on a football team. This is a team that's given up 40 a couple of times. And a telling stat that I, I saw that you found for me, Drew, is that Valley team has only scored five and a half points a game this season. And John Harden scores points. Yeah, they do. You know, uh, John Harden is averaging 20.1 points per game. Uh, Valley, like you said, on the other side, there's. I see a lot of sixes. I see a zero. I see a two. They're not a team that can get on the board very easily, especially if you've got a semi-stiff defense. Yeah, you know, their, their first uh, five weeks of play, uh, six, six, two, zero, and six are the points that they put up on the board. And, and that's, you know, that's not – that's not going to win many football games. Um, I, I'd like to know the story about the uh, 6-2 contest uh, when, when they played Iroquois. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's the same weekend that we saw some of the crazy weather in the area or whatever. We saw some of the local games affected by that. But nonetheless, a 6-2 game, there's a story behind that somewhere. I'm not sure it's a great story, but uh, it's... There's a story somewhere. Jesse Bird's going to be joining us tonight and uh, sometime during tonight's broadcast, too. Drew, you're going to be doing some play-by-play, -play, and I know that you enjoy doing this and, um, and, and putting a lot of love into it and uh, being the, going from analyst to calling what's happening on the field. It's a good challenge for you. Yeah, it will be. You know, it's something I've been wanting to do for a little while. It's, uh, it's definitely a different way of doing things. You're not analyzing what's happened. You're trying to analyze it as it happens. So it's a little bit different, a little bit different beast, but I'm excited to try it out tonight. We're going to kick off. From what I understand, Valley won the toss and deferred. They will kick off first, and uh, that's going to put Livers back there to return the football. Don't know much about this team. Uh, some of the stats and the sources that we use to gather those stats didn't give us a whole lot of background information, but we're seeing a team that's not putting a bunch of points up. And I don't think those sixes that they uh, have in, in their scoring column are from kicking two field goals. No, I don't think they are. Um, you know, a lot of times when you see those sixes in the columns, that is a touchdown, but it's one that you couldn't kick the extra point on, so you probably had to go for two. Valley comes out. They're in the white jerseys. They'll be on the right of the TV screen, going from right to left. John Harden rocking the home black and red attire with the white helmets. Bulldogs expect a short kick here. Even though following my own logic, there is a good tilt to the ball, and generally you can see a guy try to boot it when, when they tilt it backwards. And this one's underway. Well, it will be as soon as he kicks the football. Here we go. It's And, hey, before I start writing people off and they can't kick the ball deep, he gets Livers back to the two. Livers got some blocks. It's up a good return. He's exciting. He's going to be taken down at around the 24-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs start their first possession of the game. Uh, Drew, 
uh, John Harden just seems like that football team that, that they, they can do some explosive things, and they have some very clever offensive plays, but to run a clever offense, you have to have good execution of your plays, and sometimes that hasn't happened this season. Yeah, they do. You know, you talk about clever plays. They're a team that can use multiple quarterbacks. We've seen uh, we've seen Anthony Witherspoon be quarterback. They're going to start Justin Russell as their quarterback tonight. He has been their main quarterback, it seems, especially in the second half of the season. So it'll be interesting to see how the uh, offense is directed tonight. Reinheimer, the fullback, he'll start the football game off with a game, with a give inside. And I'll tell you what, Valley was all over that. They weren't fooled at all. Might have lost a yard, he did, on the play. And uh, that was a quick, off-the-ball move by Valley. I'm going to look yeah. up number seven, uh, 53. We're going to get to know some of these players as the game goes by today. But uh, 53, Kenneth Culver, yeah, great. a sophomore. Got a pretty decent build to him, and one of those guys is just getting bigger. Yeah, great penetration there by the, uh, by the Valley defense to shut down that run play. So it'll be interesting to see how John Harden answers that. Russell in, the, Russell in the pistol looking to throw. He's their throwing quarterback. Throws, makes a connection. It's caught, bobbled, fumbled, and I think Valley has just picked up a turnover. And gosh, you know, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but John Harden has been self-inflicted. That one, I'm not sure there was even a play on the football. It just, it was, the catch was made and uh, the ball popped out. And just like that, Valley's got the ball in good field position. Yeah, Caleb Blaine was able to get the tackle and the fumble on that, and that's the kind of plays you have to make if you're a team like Valley. You have to set yourself up with the short field challenge. You know, you can't be having these, you know, these long drives starting in your own territory. So it'll be interesting to see now that they've got the, a little bit of momentum on their side what they can do with it. Jesse is quick to point out that um, the quarterback, Campus, has the same last name as the coach. We don't know the relation there, but sometimes that seems to be a family relationship right the give is to a speedy back i got to get the number on him so we can get to know this player but number four scoots around the left side and i'll tell you what they had a livers look to him and uh, that was kind of exciting guillory got the tackle on there i believe that was number four demont walter yeah well uh, that is walter on that one and uh tell you what he got out to the outside very quickly this john harden defense i don't think they were prepared for that kind of quickness you know, it was, you know, he had good pop to him there, good blocking up front. And just like that, Valley's been involved in three plays in this football game, and two of them they've done quite well. That one, though, coming back. Yeah, I think they got him for a holding call as he was running up that sideline. Sometimes if you see a big run sprung like that, it is because of a hold. Some of the Valley players rocking the pink socks as a nod to the Susan G. Komen uh, Foundation. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I appreciate that. Jesse was saying that he used to do that at Central. And uh, that's, that's good. Here we go, quarterback keeper. It's just a simple play. Right up the middle, gets a bunch of yards back. It was first in a bunch, and now we're going to set up a second in about eight. That's Campus, the quarterback, just took off with it. Yeah, he did. That was a designed run from the beginning, and he ran out. Satcher got him down. That's a name we'll be saying a lot tonight. Satcher, a great tackler for this John Harden defense. We're not going to see Andre, Andre Love Pendergrass play today. He's actually up on top of the press box with a camera. Uh, appears to be injured. And uh, we're not going to see number seven play. That's a name that we have mentioned quite a bit, making tackles, but Satcher's another one on the defensive side. Here we go. Campus thought about throwing. <laughs> Hung on to the football, escapes a horse collar, and dives forward, picks up a couple of yards. i tell you what, that was an athletic move. Yeah, 75 on the tackle, but Satcher was in the backfield, and he had a hold of the jersey just as he started to take a step up. So what a great play by the John Harden defense continuing to disrupt this Valley or uh, this Valley offense. Campus had his arm fully extended with that football out there, like almost in a throwing motion, and pulled it back. And, and my small hands, I can't do that. If I had my hand out, outstretched with the football in it in one hand, that would have been a fumble. And I don't know how he hung onto the ball, let alone broke the tackle. So uh, third down here, I don't expect them to be kicking field goals. So uh, they don't have to pick up a first down on this play. But it's interesting to see what they've done. They've had some success running off left. And uh, the quarterback's been keeping it. So here's Campus. He's looking to throw. Goes deep. He's got a receiver open with a bump, and it's a touchdown. And uh, I'll tell you what, you tell me this team has only scored six points in, in all of their games prior and 13 last week. They, they look like they got some offensive pop, Drew. Yeah, they do. i tell you what, that kind of surprised me uh, just from the videos I've seen on them. I watched a lot of film on them this week, and it, I wasn't expecting Expecting a, an explosive play like that, but what a connection for Campos to read for the touchdown. 
we'll see how the kicking game is before I evaluate a team that I haven't seen play. I, I just I, when I when I see a team that doesn't have any sevens, I, I, I anticipate that they've been going for two for a reason. Here the spot is down, and hey, he's got a good boot. He kicks yeah, it up there and almost sent it as a souvenir to the to the parking lot. If people are familiar with the stadium here, there's a fence up there behind the uh, behind the goalpost, and he darn near put that up and over it. So I mean, I, I gotta not say anything about this kicking game, and that's their first seven of the season. Yeah, that was pretty impressive, really. Um, just, uh, I mean, he like you said, he nearly put that one in the parking lot. About every time you say that about a kicker, though, that seems to happen. Yeah, yeah, I, I should just shush. How about the kickers? I, I, I did some kicking when I was in high school and in college. I, I, I like the kicking game. I seem to dwell on it a little bit, I know. But uh, it's a big part of the game. If you've got a guy that can kick the ball to the end zone on kickoffs, you don't have to tackle anybody, and you're not going to give up any returns. And if you've got a guy that can kick your extra point at the end of touchdowns, uh, that might be the one point that separates you from a, from a, a close game. Thank you for the Bulldogs, number 41, Darren Davis, number three. All right, and our game tonight brought to you by... E-Town Exterminating, West Point Bank, Bluegrass Cellular, and also Physical Therapy Associates, and Brandenburg Telecom, who is streaming, who is broadcasting us live tonight for Friday Night Football. Well, here's how we started the game, and i got to be honest, if you look at this on paper, I didn't expect this to be the way this game got started. So uh, that's why they play the football games, Drew. Yeah, that is, you know, on paper, everything looks good on paper, but... <laughs> Sometimes that's not how it plays out in the actual game. Well, how about that? There's no defending that. If the ball makes it to the end zone in high school football, it's an automatic touchdown. Even if the guy catches the ball, uh, the returner, he can't return it out of the end zone. John Harden will start their series at the 20. They bring you to the 25 in the NFL, not so much in high school. Uh, John Harden ran two plays and fumbled. And so that's how their drive ended. And it turned into a Valley touchdown. And I'll tell you what, from what I saw of Valley, I, I'm not seeing a team that can't play football. No, we're not. This doesn't look like a 1-5 and five team out here. They look like a team that should be, uh, you know, 4-1, and 5-1. and one, But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the John Harden offense responds. You know, you have a start like that, you definitely think uh, this could get out of hand quickly. Still a whole lot of football time left in this game. Let's see how the Bulldogs respond. Here's Russell, and he's just absolutely manhandled but he doesn't have the football everybody including this announcer thought he had the football and they took him down but it's Reinheimer for a gain uh if we've seen anything on the three offensive plays the Bulldogs have run is that that uh, Valley's getting penetration on a good John Harden line they're running a 4-4 defense and they're showing the blitz and I tell you what they brought at that time and <laughs> They're very Whoa. lucky that Russell didn't have the ball, or that would have been an instant sack. There's a couple guys up front for this Valley team that can play, and uh, there's some penetration again. This time, uh, we've seen this before. It's livers around the end, and they scouted that nicely, but it's going to be enough for a, a John Harden first down. Yeah. Salzano got the tackle on there, but not before Livers could pick up the first down. And I tell you what, it's like you said, they're bringing the pressure. They're getting great penetration, but Livers around the edge. We've seen that play a hundred times from this John Harden offense. Yeah, and, and it, 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 want, it almost seems like 65 of them have been big plays, but that's a big number. But it, he uh, has the ability to take it to the house on any time he has the football, and I'm sure Valley is aware of that. And uh, on that particular play, they kept him a little bit contained. Here we go. It's, uh, this is going to be uh, Reinheimer Ryan up the middle for a big gain. Everybody looking at that outside run. Reinheimer cuts back, and he's going to be taken down to the 20. That is a big gain. That is going to take him from the 31 to the 20. Let's call it a gain of uh, 30 and 9, 49 yards on the play and uh, setting up a first down. Let me tell you, that I've noticed with, their, with them running this 4-4 with that blitz, the problem with bringing a blitz against a good running team is that if the runner gets past that first wave, they're into the secondary with nobody back there to grab them. So that is what bit Valley on that play. Like I said, they came with a rush on a blitz, but once Reinheimer got past that first wave, he was free and clear until one of the safeties grabbed him. It's possible for a team sometimes to look great when they sell out on a particular play and they make the right choice, but when they sell out on the wrong guy, you end up with a fullback running for 50 yards. Here's Livers inside for some tough yards. He's got to do that once in a while to make sure that people don't key over to the to the tackles. He likes to run off the outside. He's not the biggest guy on the football field, but he's one of the fastest guys out there. And Sometimes you've got to take it inside or they won't take you honest to do that. So 
Very true, and you know, uh, Duval got the tackle on that, but something I'm noticing, Valley is biting very hard on everything John Harden does. So John Harden's getting a lot out of these fakes. They faked it to Reinheimer that time and was able to get Liver some room because everybody keyed in on Reinheimer. Yeah, it's funny how you get respect when you take 150 yards, right? Here's a deep shot to Davis. It's too deep, though. Davis had a step on his defender, and, I, you know, I like that call right there. Davis had an unfortunate fumble in the first drive, and you, you know, want to let the guy know that, hey, you still got faith, you're still part of this football team, and we're going to take a shot to you deep because uh, we've seen Davis get open, and he, he can outrun a lot of the guys that we've seen covering him. So he, he, he's got an opportunity to do something here and make everybody forget about coughing up the football early in a district game. At least I won't bring it up, but two or three more times. How about it? Here we go. Justin, he's got a screen pass set up. I love the play. It's to Reinheimer inside, and he's going to rumble, bumble, and stumble in for a touchdown. What a play. And, you know, there it is, Valley again. They're running that 4-4. They brought the blitz, but what's the worst thing you can do? When, what's the best thing as an offense you can do when they bring the blitz? Throw the screen pass, and they executed it perfectly. But Valley's got a player down. I can't see the number from where I'm sitting. And he's going to get off, but he's limping off the field. So Valley doesn't have depth, you know, and, and they, they just don't have a whole lot of uh, football bodies on this team to, to be losing any of their starters, uh, let alone uh, a, uh, uh, an individual that goes both ways for them. So as we take a break, Drew, uh, let us know who's part of our broadcast sponsor. Our broadcast sponsors tonight, we've got Physical Therapy Associates. More personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Also, E-Town Apartments by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. Bluegrass Cellular offering the most affordable and limited plan anywhere. Where wireless works, visit at bluegrasscellular.com. E-Town Exterminating, 737-6900, online at mugabug.com. And West Point Bank has five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Find them online at westpointbank.com. Let them make your life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. Tonight's broadcast is an HCEC-TV student production, a division of the Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, eTown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. And I believe David has our uh, our crew tonight. Yeah, our crew tonight. Our director is C.J. Carroll. Student director is Sabrina Bergman. On graphics tonight, Gabe Stolkup. And um, we're, we're going to task Gabe with the difficult challenge of of uh, writing all of our names correctly because we keep telling them that one person's broadcasting and somebody else starts broadcasting and we, we have a good time with that sometimes but uh, that's going to be Gabe's job tonight is to put the uh, put the names up there including their own and uh, so he's going to be our featured staff member today on audio that's Tacoma Yohola and uh, I'm probably saying her last name wrong and they will let me know. Uh, Alex Greer is on Cam 2 and on Cam 1 is Jaslyn Barnes. Uh, looks like the Valley player is walking off on their own power. That's good and we're going to resume to football with the point after touchdown. John Harden can kick and I'm guessing for them to uh, tie up this ball game. Yeah, it's too early in the game to try to go for anything special, go for a two-pointer or anything. Um, they're not like we saw last week where the, uh, the, the Southwestern team would would kind of shift into a different formation before shifting into that kicking formation. John Harden not going to try anything special here. Kick is up, and uh, it's good. Good. I had it going a little bit more to the left than it actually did. Tie ball game. And uh, all right, let's see how Valley responds after the kickoff. John Harden hasn't kicked off in this game yet, and uh, we'll see where Valley gets started. Now, if you're chasing the schedule or if you're checking it out and find out what what John Harden's done this season last week well it wasn't a good one they uh, they were on the road against a good western team and they lost 49 13 prior to that we saw a great game that came down to the wire against Meade County and speaking of Meade County they're taking on North today and the last time me and you saw North and Meade County play that was another one that went down to the wire so uh, I, I'm interested to see the news enterprise score updates on that game and some of the other ones throughout the area and uh, if I haven't said it enough we certainly appreciate the news enterprise keeping us in the know with their tweets yeah definitely you know it's, it's kind of 
it, it's a good thing when you're on a live broadcast to be able to tell out those scores and, and kind of track them as the game goes. You know, you don't want to be completely in the dark as to what other things in the in the area and in the district maybe are, are doing. Uh, something our spotter just pointed out, the reason Valley's defense is getting such great penetration is they are jumping the snap, but if they're not careful, that can lead to an offsides penalty. Here's a kick. It's uh, a line drive fielded at about the eight. Start slow, brings it back, got a couple of blockers, and Valley will begin their position at about the 30.2 yard line, if such a thing existed, but that's about where they're going to be. 7-7, uh, seven, seven, what Valley does here, completely up to them. Walter on the return there, and I tell you what, that one was just about broken. If he'd gotten one more block, I think he's taken that one to the house. But a great job by John Harden. Let him get a couple yards and then just close the door on him. Kind of an interesting feel tonight because normally we have the ESPN radio crew in here, a couple of visiting coaches. We got a bunch of different people, and we got plenty of space up in here. In fact, it probably sounds echoey on our broadcast because, well, it's got a wide open press box up here. Uh, they've even got, you know, the the. The extra crew doing uh, do, doing the home broadcast here. Jordan Rivers, of course, uh, generally the stadium announcer, but they're doing a fantastic job over there. And, uh, you know, it, it's just got a different feel to it. It's like, are, yeah, it we, are, we, are we here at John Harden? Walter on the run. Walter on the run. He's going to get just a short gain, probably back to the original line of scrimmage. And uh, tell you what, if this John Harden defense starts stiffening up, we might see a little problem out of Valley. They're not a team that puts a lot of points on the board. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, if you would have told me that they hadn't scored a touchdown and kicked an extra point all season long, I would have uh, thought you were telling me fibs because they looked like a good offensive team in that first drive. And so whatever they did in practice this week after winning a football game last week, it seemed to pay off. Here we go. It's campus. Campus is in trouble, and he's going to be brought down. Satcher, and I told you we were going to say his name a lot tonight, and he was on that. Th John Harden brought the blitz, and there was just nowhere for him to go. You know, there was probably, you know, when you bring the blitz, a lot of times you'll leave somebody open or kind of open in the back. But if you get enough of a rush, that quarterback's never going to see who's open because he's too busy running for his life. Kenneth Satcher is a good football player. I mean, I've just enjoyed watching him play. There, there have been moments where he's been the – uh, the, 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 the defining force on that Bulldog front line. And uh, he kind of plays a, that, that end linebacker hybrid role, mostly defensive end, but uh, he's, he's, he's the player to watch out there right now defensively, number nine. Yeah, Third you can and see him there at the uh, left. Just on, yeah, just on the left right there. Here's Campus with third and 17. Throws the ball, knocked down, and uh, that's uh, down by number 56, Isaiah Reed. Isaiah, Isaiah Reed, Reed with a knockdown. You know, set up a punt, and that's the kind of offensive series I expected from a team that's averaging 5.5 .5 points a game. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. Again, great penetration by John Harden, and at that point you can just swat the ball down with both hands. Livers is going to be back to receive this one. He's standing about his own, I'd say, 38-yard line. There's a couple guys in this area that you don't want to kick the football to ever. And uh, Stephen Livers is one of those. Uh, the other one would be, uh, I guess, Joseph Becker uh, for E-Town is just guys that you don't want to punt the football to. And uh, I'm curious to see how Valley plays this because if they watch any tape whatsoever, they know not to kick it to them. And guess what? They uh, kick it to them. But it's going to take a, a friendly bounce for Be Valley, and it's not going to make it to Stephen Livers. Bulldogs are going to start with the football in enemy territory just on the other side of the logo. Culver was able to uh, down it because it started taking some friendly John Harden bounces. And I tell you, we talk about penetration. John Harden had some good one, good penetration on that last play. They just about blocked that field goal. Valley punt. <laughs> Valley High School in Louisville. They are the Vikings and actually rock that Minnesota Viking uh, look. I, I, I know that that particular mascot has a name and I can't I don't want to do him a disrespect or any kind of disrespect to Vikings fans but it's straight up the Viking logo from the from, from the pro team so uh, it's a familiar look there are no pro Bulldogs at least not in football here's an inside handoff that's not going to go anywhere Valley sold out on that they scouted it well brought it down the carry was 26 and uh, that wasn't happening yeah no value again with they they brought the blitz. They were able to get great penetration on John Harden's offensive line, and they were just able to shut that run down. But you got to watch it. Like I said, they're still jumping that snap. They're timing it just right. 
But if you're not careful, a hard count will draw you right off sides. And that's where the coaching staff eventually is going to notice that. If, and no, no knock on Jesse. He played the game. But, uh, you know, and that's a captain obvious uh, observation that I'm sure the, the staff is going to do something. They're going to tell the quarterback, hey, you know, just, just give that hard bark up there and you're going to get a free five yards. And, and once you get a team that jumps off sides a couple of times in a row, then now all of a sudden their zeal to do it again. They don't want to get um, you know yelled at by their coach or their sidelines or anything. So so you're not, they're not getting that penetration. And here you go. And guess what just happened? Yeah, I don't think they actually jumped on that. I think they had somebody lined up in the neutral zone. It looked like one of their defensive linemen was a little bit farther forward than he was supposed to be. So, uh, but like you, like I said, when you're trying to jump the snap, you're going to try to edge up there just as far as you can. And that time it it, it bit Valley. You know, just like receivers do, if you're the defensive end and you're lined up up there, you can check with that linesman and say, hey, am I all right? And, and they'll let you know if you're offsides or not, but uh, nobody apparently did that. Here we got another piece of laundry, and this one is going to just take back the five yards they just gained and kind of a seesaw battle of, of flags here. John Harden's going to keep the football, of course, but they'll just have a little bit longer to pick up the, 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 the conversion. Yeah, we're back to where we originally were when the – when that player lined up offside. So it'll be interesting to see, is John Harden going to go with a hard count on one of these? Russell looking to throw, does, tosses outside. Nice play to Davis. And uh, Davis picks up most of that yardage that he needed for the Actually, first down back. Yeah, what a great play. He got out into a little bit of space and was able to accelerate. And that's the kind of things that John Harden wants to do. They want to get him out in space. Williams was able to get him down, but we've got another Valley player down. Uh, looks like it might have been Williams that made that tackle and – here he comes back up, but uh, he'll have to go out for a play. But like I said, they want to get their – it's Bradley Duvall, excuse me, that's going off the field. Uh, tell you this, this John Harden offense, if they can get some people in space. Not sure what just – I'm not sure what just happened, <laughs> yeah. but uh, our press box felt like something was dropped on it from above. We've had some sort of medical emergency take place up top. To uh, yeah, we've got uh, somebody that was at the on the top of the, the press box has press had a medical box. emergency, and, and I don't mean to make light of that. mentioned earlier that the press box was was empty and, uh, and that changed and not to make any light of the situation we don't have any information but all of a sudden we had a whole bunch of people come in we, we heard a loud noise drew and and uh, and it appeared that somebody had had a, a medical emergency on the top of the, of the box there and we certainly hope that that has a, a good ending to that story uh, Justin Russell with a toss it's deep into the end zone and that is caught I believe that, that is Looks like it was Kenneth Satcher, Kenneth on Satcher. the reception for a touchdown. He calls tight end as well as uh, we've been calling his name on defense, and he caught a touchdown. Before that, Stephen Livers ran for 21, and and uh, John Harden. We we thought would probably be the victor offensively in this game if you were to match those two teams up, and that looked good. That was a nice pass by uh, by Russell, and uh, he he connected with the receiver. Apologize to those watching here. We, our, our concerns are with the many people that have gone up to the uh, roof of this press box here to, yeah. to, to handle a situation. We had a lot of people to converge in here really quick, and and uh, we can only hope that that has a, a, a good answer here in a bit. Apparently, an individual that was up there had a, had a seizure of some kind and is up and talking so uh, we're not going to give any more information about that out of respect to those involved and uh, we're going to get back to football 303 to play 14-7 the score here at John Harden I'm David Gary with me Drew Bernardi Jesse Bird is helping us out with his observations and spotting 
Um, Jesse noticed early that um, Valley came out with that 4-4 and they tried to stack the box. And uh, the, the interesting thing about that is is that uh, John Harden, when they want to, they will throw the football. And so if you're going to load up on there and dare them to do it, they'll take it. There's guys on this football team that can catch the ball. And we haven't really named uh, Satcher as an offensive weapon and uh, why not he's one of the most athletic guys on the field and uh, he looked pretty good on that touchdown catch yeah yeah he plays tight you know he plays tight end he also plays defensive end and uh, they've got a passer now who seems to be coming into his own in Justin Russell um, I mean this year he's got five touchdowns two interceptions 52.9 percent completion yeah, at the high school level, you're just kind of happy to see more TDs and interceptions. And, and it's quite often the case that uh, 50% is the benchmark on, on successful passers, kind of like the 300 line in baseball is, is kind of your benchmark for success. And in high school, you know, it's a little lower because especially a team that, that, that runs and in high school football, you're going to get more runs than throws. Uh, maybe, maybe not if you're North Harden. I, 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 I would be curious to see their stats. They throw the football a lot. Uh, we've seen... Hobbs at Central throw the football a bunch, but they still would like to run the football first. Yeah, I mean, and I'll tell you, you say that that 50% benchmark is kind of the benchmark for high school. How do you think about a team that's got two players over that benchmark? Anthony Witherspoon and Justin Russell both. Uh, Witherspoon 51.6, Justin Russell basically 53% on passing. So uh, either one of them could throw the ball at any moment for John Harden. But here comes the Valley offense back. It's interesting to see what they'll do and uh, if John Harden can continue to bring great pressure on that quarterback. Valley scored first on a deep touchdown pass, and uh, so we know Campus can throw the football, and here we go. This worked earlier, and uh, that's that same play that we saw him pop off earlier in the football game, and it's got success again. That's uh, going to be Walker for our 12 yards, and, and that looks good. That's a good-looking football play right there. Yeah, Wal uh, Walter got a good run off that left side, got a, got a first down. When you're coming around and you've got that outside working, uh, definitely something that we that you like to see when you're a coach. Valley on the move, just on their side of the Bulldog logo, trying to make something happen. They're down seven. Took advantage of a John Harden fumble earlier in the contest and scored two plays later. Let's see what Campus and his Vikings do here. Here's the pistol snap. It's inside. Big hit. And guess what? It's Kenneth Satcher. <laughs> Yeah, Satcher <laughs> laid the wood on that hit. I mean, just knocked him down. We've got a flag on the play. Uh, it was Walter on the run again, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see what this flag is. You know, <laughs> Kenneth, Kenneth Satcher just decided to bring the contact back to this contact sport on that play. There was a collision up in there. And then it's also to add insult to injury for the Viking football team, they... Had a penalty on the play, so they're going to march this one off 10 yards. So not only do they lose yards on the on the play, we're going to get this marched off. First and 20 on the uh, on the 34-yard line for the Valley Vikings. Yeah, I tell you, John Harden is getting great penetration. They've just got to watch those little off-tackle runs like we saw earlier. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, like I said, with this John Harden Bulldog offense, they are defense, they are getting a lot of pressure without having to bring a huge blitz, whereas Valley is having to bring the kitchen sink to be able to get pressure on John Harden. Yeah, again, I mentioned it earlier, but John Harden has depth, and Valley does not. I, I'm not sure that Valley has a full 11 men that can can, can play on the other side of the football um, that, that doesn't rely on several of these starters going both ways. And, and, and as this football game goes forward, you're going to see one team be uh, – progressively more tired than the other. Here's Campus. He was the only one back there, so we knew he was throwing. Had a receiver. It bounces off. It's intercepted by John Harden. And uh, it, I'll tell you what, everything looked good on that for Valley. It, it was a nice, it was a well-thrown ball. Hit his receiver in the hand, popped up in the air, and it was picked off by, I believe, 15 for John Trevor Harden. Trevor Nelson, he's got quite a few interceptions for this John Harden defense this year. I want to say he's probably got three or four of them just looking through the stats I've got, but uh, that ball got tipped in the air, and once it's there, boy, do defenders just love that and just easily grab that one out of the air. Uh, like I said, great play by the John Harden defense, and now's when we could see this John Harden offense just take a shot. You just got the momentum back on your side. I, I mean, take a shot towards the end zone. Let's see what you can do. Something that John Harden does when they come onto the football field is 
when Davis is split on this uh, near side of the football field, sometimes he just kind of sets up and he doesn't join the team in the huddle. And uh, if you're not careful defensively, sometimes you can overlook that guy out there. And uh, I would be curious to see if that happens today. Guess what? He had m every intention of going deep on that play, and he just did and caught a touchdown. And just like that, we're forgetting about an early miscue. It's now 20 to seven. I, 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 I knew something was up. I knew something was up. He, he lined up wide. He came off the, uh, the, the, the sideline and didn't join his team in the huddle. And I think they were hoping that maybe Valley didn't account for him split out wide out there. Yeah, he was actually he actually stepped out ah. at the three-yard line. But what did I just say about taking a shot? That's when you have to do it, when you get that big turnover. And John Harden expertly took that shot. Here's Reinheimer. He's not going to have any any interference with his effort to get into the end zone. And just like that, now we're kind of seeing a little bit of the outcome of this game that we uh, we might have predicted early. But uh, it looked like Valley had some potential, and it's still pretty early in this football game. They they the mechanics are there. The young man Campus is a quarterback. He he throws the football like a laser. And he, he has some athletic ability out there, so I, I'm not sure exactly what the disconnect is with this uh, the Valley football team because it looks like they got a few guys playing. They aren't the biggest team we've seen come out here. They've got a few athletic guys on their on their roster, but uh, with 205 left in the first frame, 21-7 Bulldogs, and you know I don't I don't see them taking their foot off the gas anytime soon. Yeah, I do not see them taking the foot off the gas at any time. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Physical Therapy Associates. More personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, and Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Etownapartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. You know, earlier I called out Gabe Stolkup as the graphics guy, and uh, he just threw a cool touchdown graphic up. And uh, we got a monitor up in here, and we, we have outstanding technology. And I'll tell you what, when, when CJ's running the show, it's a good show. I, and and not, nothing against Dale. He's been doing it a long time. But CJ's been practicing. He's got all kinds of cool gadgets up here now. And uh, the ability to watch the game on the TV when we got it live in front of us and have cool graphics, well, thanks, guys. I, I, we appreciate that. Here's the kick. It takes a bounce. It's fielded on one hop by Valley. Valley... Somebody laid a pop out there. <laughs> yeah, That's 22. Wow, John Harden is just bringing the heat today with these hits. And he just got laid out. 32. What a, what a great play by, by John Harden to just shut him down. And that's what you want to see out of your kickoff coverage team. Isaiah Dilworth. John Harden lining up in that 4-3 defense, playing off of him a little bit. There's that run to the left. It's worked for Valley. I like it. It's a good play, and uh, he's, he's got Walter a good, a good look. It's, it's Walter with the run, and um, that looks a lot like a play that John Harden runs with great success. That off-tackle run, uh, it requires everybody to make their blocks, and it requires a quick running back. You can't really do that with a slow fullback because it just doesn't develop right, but uh, if you've got a quick guy that can get around that edge, it's a dangerous weapon. You got a hole in the cover. Right it is. There. Safety better pick up the read. Here we go. Not sure if they switch quarterbacks on us, Drew, and I think they – no, it's campus. Campus goes inside, and uh, they're not having any of that. That's Walter again. And, and uh, who was on that? That was Kenneth Satcher <laughs> once again. Did I mention earlier that Kenneth Satcher is a good football player? Yeah, Walter, the, with the attempted run again, Satcher was just having none of it. Right up the middle, grabbed him, brought him down. Got a score update. We mentioned his name earlier. Jay Beckerer, 61-yard run on the opening play. Elizabethtown is leading Adair County 7 to nothing. 11:37 left in the first quarter, and Fort Knox is leading Webster County 8 to nothing after the first quarter. There you go, go Knox. 
That's Jay Becker. I mentioned his brother, Joseph. And, uh, you know, when you got a couple of guys with the same name out there, that means the legacy continues. And, uh, you know, Joseph is one of the more outstanding, exciting players around. Not one of the biggest guys in the area, but I'll tell you what, you look at his numbers and it's just impressive. Speaking of impressive, that was a nice, nice offensive play, but it just doesn't pan out for Valley. A nice toss. He just His receiver didn't hang on to the football. Yeah, Hicksonball trying to get that pass, and it just it looked like it was a catch from here, and then you saw him hit the ground, and that ball came bouncing out. So uh, unfortunate there because that was, that was a hole in the coverage. Someone on John Harden didn't pick him up immediately, and he got behind a couple of players. But uh, kind of a lucky play break there for the John Harden defense. Braden Campus, the quarter, the quarterback. I'll tell you what, there's nothing wrong with this young man. He, He's, uh, he's got all the fun mechanics, and he's not afraid to throw the football. A little shovel pass forward to Walter, and Walter's going to get a bunch of yards, setting up a first, a first down. down. Improvises. Yeah, when they're bringing the rush like that, you can set up a little screen pass or a little shovel pass. Nelson was able to get him on the tackle, but not before he got that first down. And like I said, when they bring the heat, you can throw that little pass just beyond the heat, and there's wide open green space in front of you. So what a great dialed up play by this Valley offense. I liked it. I think he wanted to take off running and saw a guy, hey, I'll give it to him instead of getting tackled. 15 seconds left to play. This is probably going to be the last play of the first quarter. I've been wrong when I've said that before. Here's Campus thinking about it, looking for some advice from the coaching staff over there. He's just going to run the football. Takes off, he's quick, gets around the right end and dives four. That is the last play of the first quarter. Get up to the, about the 39-yard line. That's the end of the first quarter. Tonight's broadcast is an HCEC TV student production, a division of the Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, eTown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Good news that the individual that we were concerned about earlier did walk out under their own power and uh, under um, advisory of, of medical professionals, and uh, that's good. That uh, we, 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 we like that. We, we didn't know what had happened earlier. There was a, a loud noise above us, and, and I certainly didn't want to make light of it. It just made the entire box shake, and, and then there was a tense moment where we were calling for medical uh, attention. and. And I'm just glad that it worked out all right. This, and, and certainly a nod to all the people that responded, uh, including the uh, press box crew with us. They, they made the call, and everybody came to it. So uh, that, that's, that's wonderful that people responded to that. And, and uh, we don't have anything more to talk about that. They're going to switch sides. John Harden's going to go from uh, right to left on your screen if you just joined us. They're the ones in the black and red. Valley from Louisville. Well, they won their first game last week. It was a close one. They put up 13 points, but they haven't scored a lot of points this season. In fact, that seven that they put up there is the first time they scored more than six other than last week. And, um, but John Harden has put up three touchdowns. Fumbled on their first drive, but after that, it's been touchdown after touchdown. Campus, the senior quarterback, he's looked good and made some things happen. He's just going to take it forward for a first down. There's nothing fancy about that. All you do is tap the center on the, pit, on the hip pad. And yeah, not blaze there forward. Was a, there was a lot of room for him to do that. You know, uh, John Harden has moved out a little bit to try to contain that outside run, and that just left a huge gap in the middle of their defense for, their, for a run like that. We saw Central Harden take advantage of that earlier this year with Jacob Hobbs. He likes to take off and run whenever he sees something like that. And uh, so something that John Harden's going to have to do, you can come outside a little bit, but don't come too far outside. You're going to leave that middle run wide open. Satcher checked out on the play. Subbed out for a larger defensive tackle. It's Walter, and he's got space, and he's got quickness, too. Walter goes forward, and mm, some contact in the, in, in, in the back there. That's uh, Gilroy laid a hit on him, and i tell you what, there's been a lot hey. of good hits in this game. Yeah, that's Devonta Gillery, and, 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 and um, I believe he also kicks for the football team. So if you get uh, laid out by the kicker, that's 85, isn't it? Um, is it Deshaun Johnson with the tackle? Look at it this, is. a little bit of a quarterback keeper, but it did not work. Denied. And he's he's getting up a little gingerly, but it looks like he's going to be all right. Uh, 
I tell you what, they came flooding in on that and just a, just about got a fumble on that, but he was down before the ball came loose. Holyfield came in there on that tackle, and I, I tell you what, when this John Harden defense decides it wants to get to the quarterback, you're not stopping it. Valley can stay in this football game. They're moving the ball. Second and 13. Inside the red zone. They've had good success running the ball with the quarterback and Walter. Curious to see what they've done here. They've had some miscues trying to throw the football, and I'm not sure it's the quarterback's fault. Here we go. A little dive off of right guard. That's going to pick up a couple of yards. Not sure Valley needs to try for the first down on this play. I don't see them kicking a field goal. However, we did see a pretty decent boot on that point after touchdown, so they could kick a field goal from there. Yeah, they definitely could. And I'll tell you what, this John Harden defense, they were learning from their mistakes. You know, every time you see Valley get a big gain off of something, they try it again, and John Harden's adjusted already to try to keep that from happening again. So that's what you want to see out of your team. Timeout called by the Vikings. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Physical Therapy Associates. More personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. It's broadcast live by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all of your telecommunications needs. Let's talk about Anthony Witherspoon a little bit. Coming into the game, 40 carries, 257 yards. That's, you know, that's rocking over six yards a carry. That's that's pretty good stuff. Many of those carries from the quarterback position, but he also takes that end-around run that we've seen the Livers do. Three touchdowns. Um, that's over the first six games. Uh, 20 catches on the air, 278 yards, another three touchdowns. And uh, as a quarterback... 16 for 31, 277 yards, thrown two touchdowns, three picks. Talked about that whole benchmark. If you're measuring a guy up, you want to have more TDs than interceptions. You know, the fantasy football rule applies, I think, there. You, you want to score more points than that. But 51.6% um, completion rate. He's also played a little defense and uh, picked off a pass and picked up 50 yards on that. So uh, we haven't really called his name in this football game. Here we go. Campus and the Vikings talked about it a little bit. You're curious to see what they do. They still come out with a pistol formation, shift Walter to the right side, trips right, and Walter looking to throw here. He does, fakes the give, throws over the middle, and uh, that one I'm going to put on the quarterback. He didn't give enough to his receiver to, get, to make it there, Drew, and that's going to set up a fourth and ten. I don't see him kicking here. Yeah, and I think John Harden kind of got a hand on that one. Number 34 of John Harden just about picked that one off. So you get a little bit of a, a little bit of a deflection on that, and that can turn things up. Here we go, fourth and ten. Those bulldog faithful who are here making a little racket, trying to get the ball back. We're live action at John Harden High School campus. The quarterback. Looking to throw, he's in trouble. It's Satcher chasing him, and he can't connect with his receiver, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. Great defense. We've been calling his name all day. Yeah, great. Like I said, great uh, defensive play by John Harden. They've been getting the rush all night, and it's kind of hard to get – uh, to get a pass off when you're under pressure like that, when you have to roll out, when you have to get around. Got a score update for you. Tyler Durbin from 11 yards out. E-Town leading 14-0. 7-18 left in the first quarter. Is that against Adair County? Yes, that is against Adair County. Well, I think if we look at that one on paper, we, we expect Elizabethtown to score a bunch of points. Well, I think we expect Elizabethtown to score a bunch of points every time they, uh, they play. A couple of times they didn't win, they didn't score a lot of points. So that's just what they do. They run the ball and score a lot of points. Speaking of running the ball, there's Reinheimer again on a run off the left side. No gain. They're going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Hey, here's something that will uh, excite some people. T.J. Pittman scores on a two-yard run and runs in the conversion. Fort Knox leading Webster County 16 to nothing. There you go. 51 left till the half. Hey, they suit it up every week and play football, and they need to have a, they need to have a good time and put one in the win column. And uh, good for them. Good for them. I, 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 uh, sometimes Fort Knox is that school that multiple teams have on their homecoming schedule. And, uh, you know, there's, there's guys that go out there and they, they play for the love of the game and they, they're trying every week. And, uh, you know, one of these days it's going gonna, it's gonna to come together for them out there. 
Here we go. Uh, we got a time on the field, and uh, and, and Drew. Uh, so far, I think we're seeing sort of what we expected. Yeah, and you know we're seeing a lot of what we expected. But here's something that I that I've noticed: we haven't called Blivers and Witherspoon's names a lot. Uh, almost, you know, not as much as we normally do. Steven Livers accounts for 39.5% of John Harden's offense well, in the first six games. Let's tip the cap to a coaching staff that sometimes has to rely on a couple of their big players in closer contests. Uh, the challenge is you, you get some other guys as you gear toward the playoffs, you gear toward the end of the season, you need more than two guys to be the guys that deliver for you. So they're finding ways to get the ball to Davis. They're running the ball with Reinheimer. And, and it's going to be a team effort tonight that wins this football game. And I like it. Uh, you know, sometimes you get behind in a football game and you got to rely on those guys that get you there. Here's Russell. He wants to throw, goes deep, and he's got a receiver wide open. And, well, we hadn't said his name. And... Uh, up until then. <laughs> Steven Livers, and I tell you what, that ball was just overthrown. It was just out of the reach. It came down on the field right in front of us. And I mean, Livers just couldn't just – if he'd been a step faster, he'd have had that, and he would have been gone for a touchdown. We have an absolute great vantage point from up here in the box, and, 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 and Justin Russell looked like a guy that was going to throw the football from the, the moment that he went to the line of scrimmage. He, he, was, he, he was all kinds of excited about it, and then that double pump, and, and, and you know – that was just separation from receiver and defensive back there because Justin Russell let everybody know he was throwing the football that time. Here we go. He's going up the middle. He's not going up the middle. He's giving the livers instead around the right side, and he's going to be taken down. Uh, hey, Know, give give a little credit to a football team that obviously has seen some film of livers running wild around the, the tackle, and uh, they shut that down, and they, they actually held John Harden to punt the football here, and valley has got an opportunity to get back in this game. You know, my rule of 11, I say it every week, the rule of 11, you want to go into the halftime within, being in, within 11 points. If you're at home, you want to go into halftime leading by more than 11 points. So uh, valley has got an opportunity to get on the board here and get that within that 11. That's a manageable football game. Here we go. Good penetration. The kick is away. It doesn't go very far. It's up in the air. It's going to take a favorable bulldog roll, but not a good punt. Uh, it's going to net 12 yards. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's just not what you want to see out of your punter, and it's going to bounce out of bounds. And I'll tell you what, the, the Valley offense are going to have that short field challenge again. I, I, I ripped the punter off a little bit. That's a 22-yard punt, but that, that sets Valley up with an opportunity to score. Give me that score, score update. update. Jero Jerome Jones, one-yard run, extends John, or excuse me, extends Fort Knox's lead to 24 nothing over Webster County. 9:53 left to go in the second quarter. Fort Knox is bringing it. Good job, guys. Good to give them a shout out. And I'll tell you what, it's interesting. John Harden's playing off these receivers quite a bit. But well, one thing you see in this situation, you got a two-score lead. You don't want to give up a big ball. And we've already seen Valley throw deep multiple times. And they got scorched for a touchdown on one of those. Walters getting up, uh, Wal getting up slow. And he's been... Uh, one of two guys that's actually made things go and happening on offense, and uh, there's not a lot of depth on this Valley team. So that's, that's going to be a critical blow for them if he can't return to this football game. He's walking off pretty gingerly. Sometimes it just takes a little bit for the Mankles to, uh, to feel a little bit better. But he's a guy that's been making some stuff happen, and if Campus has to throw the football, I don't think that's what Valley's game plan is. Yeah, Solzano is going to come in and replace uh, Walter, but uh, you see him walking over to the bench over there. Yeah, he's, he's definitely feeling it. So it'll be interesting to see if this Valley offense can work as well with Salazano in there. Campus running kind of a spread set, and uh, that one was on the quarterback. I've been blaming everybody on the football field, but Mr. Campus, and he, he threw that one behind his open receiver, and that's going to set up third and seven. I would expect them to go for it if they do not convert, give them where the ball is. Yeah, I tell you what, the, like you said, that was on the quarterback. He threw it behind the receiver who was sitting there waiting for it. It was almost just a little pa pass out to the flat. You can get a lot of yards off those when it's when it's timed just right and the timing clearly off there. So it'll be, in like I said, we're going to have to see how this Valley offense responds. They've just lost one of their big playmakers. Trevor Nelson picked off a pass earlier for the Bulldogs, and we've seen this team be incredibly opportunistic when they need to, and right now they've got the lead. They'd like to keep it that way. They don't want to 
and I didn't want to get this within a score. We know the Valley can do stuff. We saw them throw the ball deep for a touchdown on the opening drive of the football game for them after a John Harden fumble, but it's been pretty much Bulldogs on their home turf since. And again, it's going to be a game of attrition. The, as as uh, Valley loses players to tiredness, to cramps, to just the general bumps and bruises of this contact sport, uh, John Harden's got more guys on their sidelines that can come in and play. They, they've run the football with seven or eight different guys uh, with double digits this season. So they, they, have, they don't have to rely on Stephen Livers or, or Witherspoon to make all the plays in this particular game. And I think that's going to be the difference going forward. So Valley has an opportunity to make this a football game with two plays here. Third down, we'll call it eight. And uh, Campus has no running backs. He's got, um, he's got a wide complement of receivers. Let's see how he plays this. He's been known to take off and run. He took off and ran. He escaped Kenneth Satcher and made a nice play out of that. Puts his head down and initiates the contact. And I think that's going to be a penalty on John Harden. Uh, I think he might have got a little bit of the mask. And number four, I think, slammed him down a little bit, may have gotten a little bit of the face mask as he dragged him out of bounds. And that's not what you want to do if you're the John Harden defense. You don't want to give away free yards. Josh Garrett. Personal foul, I believe they're going to get him for grabbing the face mask. It didn't look like he put any kind of hit on him out of bounds or anything. If anything, the quarterback campus put his head down and initiated the contact on that play. But sometimes when, uh, when, when a ball carrier does that to you, you're taken for a ride and you got no choice but to like put your hands up and try to make something happen. Here he goes, empty set again. He's got three to the top side there. Valley likes this. They're going to send the receivers out as wide as they can and, and, and hope to set up a favorable matchup with campus taking off and running the football. Speaking of running the football, it's the smallest guy in the field that gets the fake, but it's Campus running up the middle. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he faked me out because I thought for sure he had it. was going around that right side, and then I saw him slow down. Get you a name on that, but he's, he's a quick fella, but he's not the biggest guy out, out there. Whoever came in motion and uh, did not get the football on that carry. Gain a one on the play. Camp is not shy to run the football. Reminds me a little bit of that game we saw last week with Central and Southwestern. Southwestern came out, made some adjustments in that game, Drew, and they spread the field out wide, and they put three receivers out wide and set up isolation plays, and they ate Central up last week until Central decided a little too late to respond. Here we go. Here's Campus. He's under duress by multiple Bulldogs, and he's going to get out of it and at least get back to the line of scrimmage. Might have even picked up a yard on the play. Uh, good improv, improv by the quarterback, and, uh, you know, he's kind of exciting. Yeah, he's been having to do this improv thing just about all night. Uh, this John Harden Bulldogs defense is bringing a pass rush that is just not allowing him to set his feet. He can't look around for receivers. He almost has to take off running on every play because just they come crashing through the line. It's certainly a cliche term in this sport, but whoever wins the battle in the trenches tends to win the football game. Right now, John Harden's winning on both sides of the field, uh, especially defensively. Satcher and company. It's not just him. He's not. He's getting free on his own. Uh, are, are putting all kinds of pressure on a mobile quarterback. Here's Campus. Campus third and thirteen. Ball on the thirteen. But I think he can get a first down just inside the pylon. Or is it third and goal? It's third and goal. Campus throwing, throwing, not throwing. In trouble. Looking to throw. He's going to run. He throws. He has another touchdown. And that is the most points they've scored this season. Yeah, that just tied him for the most points scored this season. I'll tell you what, when you have a play like that where the quarterback can extend the play, he can scramble around a little bit, that's when you see people get open in the back side of it because you can't just cover somebody for 20, 30 seconds and somebody gets loose, and that's exactly what happened. But I tell you what, don't also don't discount the throw that Campos made. That was perfectly threaded in there past a couple of Bulldogs. Right to the back of the end zone. That was a nice play, and it was set up because the quarterback is mobile, and he's had some success running the football earlier. Kick is up and through, a little collision with the kicker, but no penalty, and uh, because, well, the kick is up and through, there's no reason to do it. 21-14 the score. You got a football game. Yeah, we do, and that, like you said, this is the most points that Valley's scored all year. They're putting up a bigger fight than I think anybody thought they were going to. Got a quick score update for you as North Harden leads Meade County 14-6, 339 before the half. 
This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all of your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Etownapartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. Another quick rundown of our crew bringing this game to you today. C.J. Carroll's our director. Sabrina Bergman, student director. On graphics is Gabe Stolkup. On audio, Tacoma Yohalla. Uh, Alex Greer's on one of the cameras, and so is Jaslyn Barnes. Vikings of Valley. Valley of Louisville, that is. We're going to kick it off, but when the ball falls off the tee, that makes the whole ritual start all over again. And here we go. I, this young man can boot it. We hit the end zone earlier, and uh, you know now I have every intention of saying that he's going to do it again. Good tilt on the ball. Looks like he's going to try to kick it. And he does, but gets a little bit under it. Goes to one of the upbacks. Not a bad idea, because kicking it to Steve Livers is a bad idea. But look at this. This is a good return, and it's going to take John Harden to almost midfield. That's 21 on the return. Yeah, what a great return on that play. He got a lot of good blocks and got out there wide. It was number 21. Da Dakota Reisner on the Dakota return. Dakota Reisner. We've said his name quite a few times. Most of the time we're saying it on defense. Uh, he's made a couple. He had an interception in the Central Harden game. Uh, he's, like I said, one that we normally say on defense more than uh, kick returning. Keep an eye on 41 at the top of your screen. That's Davis. Caught a long ball earlier, and he kind of came out looking excited again. And look at nobody is on him. Okay, they finally send a defender out there to cover him. He keeps trying to sneak in that split end spot and, and be wide open out there. And here's Livers around the right end. Now he's going to take it back around well, the left end. He comes back with that reverse. We've seen that before. He's got room. He gets a block from the quarterback that frees him up. He initiates some contact and ends up at the 26-yard line. That was all Steven Livers, but with a little help from his friends. When your quarterback is throwing some lead blocks on the other side of the field as the play was designed to go to, that's fun. Porter was finally able to get him down, but I tell you what, he just about broke that one loose. I thought he was going to break it loose out on the other side, and then he turns around, comes back to this side, and there's just nothing but green, green grass in front of him. 41 Davis doesn't commit to a, a, to a split end roll until right before the play starts, and uh, I think they're trying to catch Valley into not covering him uh, because watch on most every play, Russell is looking over and finding where Davis is and see him if he's got either man coverage, which he does right now, and I like that matchup. I wouldn't be surprised if Russell throws the end zone at Davis right here. Little bit of a broken play there. That was supposed to be an inside reverse. A couple of personnel changes. Had a couple guys going in different directions. Russell went to at least fake a handoff to somebody that wasn't there. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That was just a it was great penetration by the Valley defense. But, I mean, penetration doesn't mean anything when you, uh, you know, the Gardner coming through there. and But penetration doesn't mean anything when the play is broken from the beginning. And you mentioned that man coverage that they have up top with Davis. He's exploited that a couple of times and just about got it. It'll be interesting to see if he can continue to exploit that today. I fully expect to see a, a, a fake to Reinheimer here soon and a, and a long shot to 41. Now, not even the fake. Russell just throws it to him. And, uh, well, Mr. Davis couldn't hang on to the football. It was a little bit... A little bit on the on the hot potato side. Russell had two guys up on him and happened to be the two biggest guys on that Valley roster, and uh, I'd want to get rid of the football too. Yeah, they definitely brought the heat on that one. He just had to zip that ball out of there, and it was a little off target, but at the same time as a receiver, you've got to be able to adjust a little bit and make that catch. Uh, as you've said before, if it hits you in the hands, you've got to pull that one in. If I'm the Bulldogs, I'm liking these one-on-one -on -one matchups with my speedy receivers against this man coverage. It's almost foolish to try to, reco to, try to cover some of these guys with single coverage and, and because Bulldogs uh, receivers can outrun most of the people around. Uh, here we go, inside screen. It was thrown to Davis on consecutive plays. He can't hang on to the football, and that's going to set up John Harden with a long fourth down. And I'll tell you what, John Harden just lucked out because when he lost control of that ball, it popped straight up in the air and was nearly tip drill intercepted. Um, 
you know, that's just another one. This is a seven-point football game. That's the kind of passing you get taken to the house. So uh, if you're not going to catch the football, you got to knock it down, not knock it up. You can't tip drill it on offense. you gotta, you got to knock it down. Speaking of interception returns, Derek Smith, 25-yard interception return. Elizabethtown lead to Dare County, 21-0. 447 left in the first quarter. I, I think we can go ahead and probably call that one for Etown. I think the clock guy is going to get off a little bit early today uh, in that one. And um, you know, No disrespect to the Indians of Adair County, but uh, Etown's a team that's going in a different direction than Adair County is right now. Uh, Etown's got a favorable schedule looking forward, and uh, you know they're going to set themselves up to have a, a home game against a team that has a bunch of losses. And then we'll see what they're all about come, come playoff. And I don't think a lot of teams want to play Elizabethtown at all. Fort Knox still winning 24 uh, nothing. Yep, Fort Knox is still up 24 to zip. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by etownapartments.com by, by Mark Harris Construction. Excuse me. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. Bluegrass Cellular, offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere where wireless works. Visit at bluegrasscellular.com. Etown exterminating 737-6900 online at mugabug.com. And West Point Bank, you can find them at westpointbank.com. Well, Drew, they, they've kept this, this Valley team, has made a road trip and decided they're going to play football today. And, and uh, it's up to John Harden to uh, kind of quash the spirit of the visitors. And they got the four and a half minutes, 444 here to do that. Here's Russell. He's under duress, just flings this one up. This one's going to be picked off like almost a punt. That was a fourth down play, and, and, and it wasn't the worst thing in the world that could happen. But uh, Russell had no choice. He couldn't take the sack there, and he just tried to make a play happen. And, you know, it's the same as missing a field goal. You're up a touchdown. I, I, don't, I don't hate the effort by the quarterback there. He just, he just needed to let it fly. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, they had a, he had a pass rush in his face. He just let it fly. That ball floated on him, unfortunately, and was picked off easily. But like you said, it's just like a punt. It's going to be a long field challenge for Valley at this point. Get your defense back out there and just tell them, get that ball back for us. Been saying Kenneth Satcher's name quite a bit, but Josiah Moody's had a pretty decent football game up in there too. Uh, you know, 62 is getting lost in the uh, in the battle in the trenches up there. But watch what's going on with him. He's uh, he's a big inside defensive tackle on the left hand side, and he's winning most of his battles up there. And right now, he did not get moved from his spot. Flings outside uh, is Campos. Campos connects with his receiver on the far left. That's the, that's the guy that said earlier that wasn't very large, and I haven't found him on the roster. Andre Love is his name. And I'll tell you what, what a, what a great, uh, excuse me, a great tackle by the number 85. He was able to get a hold of him because he just, he bounced off a couple tackles and was getting ready to take off again, and they got their arms around him and pulled him down. Deshaun Johnson, the junior, at number 85, jersey number worn by their kicker last year, and, uh, He's not with the team anymore. Here we go. Campus has some time to tie up this football game. Quads right. Four receivers to the right of the line, and something happened there. I think Coach didn't like it. I don't think there was supposed to be four guys lined up to the right. Coach throwing a fit. The headset went, all kinds of stuff. The clipboard went down. Um, I, I don't believe that's how they dialed that one up. No, they didn't, and I, I tell you what, that's a timeout that I don't think they could afford to use right there, but you want to get everybody lined up. You don't want to set off a play that's going to turn into a disaster. Tonight's broadcast is a Hardin County Educational Community Television Student Production Division of the Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, etownapartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Did you notice Gabe Stolkup was right there with the graphic? Oh, I know. He's good. he's excellent with the graphics tonight. He's been on it. Big thanks to him tonight for getting all our graphics going. I'm digging it. You know, there's a lot of people that are missing a pretty decent football game tonight, unless they're all watching it at home. Maybe they're all carving pumpkins. It's that time of year, right? Um, I, I think a lot of people expected this to be a little bit different right now, but it's it's happening. Here's a screen pass to the left side. Uh, looked like it had potential, but that's a heck of a football play out there. Uh, as soon as I see who made the tackle. Walter on the run, and uh, we've got a 
McGregor on the tackle, and uh, we've got a Valley player that's down. While that player is down, I want to remind you, you can tune in weekly for rebroadcast of all local HCEC TV programs on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable's Channel 2, along with Spectrum Communications on Channel 184. Once again, a shout out to the crew tonight. Uh, we'll start with on camera, Jazlyn and Alex. Tacoma on audio. We've been giving Gabe, Gabe all kinds of shout outs today. Great graphics, including the score that's on the bottom of the screen so right now. Nice job. Doing. Student director tonight is Sabrina Bergman and CJ Carroll's in charge of our broadcast tonight. Uh, I appreciate CJ. He gets us set up week after week after week. And we've been doing this a couple of years. We've got to know CJ a bit. And uh, thank you very much for making this happen, guys. And, and, and we've got a great student crew. And what an asset it is to the school system to have this opportunity for people to learn how to do this firsthand, just like for any kind of network. So here we go. Satcher's all up in the mix of the quarterback, and that makes him want to throw it away. And that's a good choice. And uh, Valley's going to bring the punting team on. And good job by John Harden to not let Valley back in this football game. And I'll tell you what, they had a great one-on-one -on -one match up there. And a great job by John Harden putting the pressure on. One hopped it right to the receiver, but I tell you what, if that pressure's not there, that's probably a very good completion for a first down, if not a touchdown, because it was a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and I believe the Valley receiver may have had the advantage on that one. Somebody in that Valley sideline is probably going to say, hey, man, try not to kick it to number three, but yet time and time again we see people do it week after week, and uh, let's see how this plays out. Interesting punt formation. Fumbled, and uh, the kick is away, nearly blocked. It's not going to be a big punt at all. Uh, that's going to net uh, about um, 20 yards tops. A little bit of roll, call it 21. And uh, well, that's a way not to kick it to Stephen Livers, but uh, that's going to set the Bulldogs up with the ball in Viking territory with 324 to play. And Davis, we've been calling his name all night on offense, but he just about blocked that kick. May have gotten just a little piece of it, but it did seem to have a pretty good spin coming off there. So it looks like it was a uh, was a punt under duress, which th those don't always go very well. Speaking of Davis, look at what he's doing here. He, he sneaks into that split end uh, without going into the huddle. And hoping that just one of these defenders doesn't look at him because they, they've got it figured out already where Russell looks over and sees if Davis is covered. Now, again, there's that single coverage on, on a very speedy receiver. Uh, I, I, and uh, here we go. Instead, bring the blitz. It's a carry off left tackle, and uh, Valley covers that pretty well. I don't think there was a gain at all. Porter came in on the blitz, and uh, that's just going to shut down any rushing hopes that John Harden had on that play. But I tell you what, this Valley team, like I said about John Harden, they're adapting. They're learning what John Harden does, but you still got to watch out for somebody like Davis. You still got to watch out for somebody like Livers because they could go off at any time. Davis made a couple, ca couple nice catches. He's also had a couple go off the hands today, so sometimes that doesn't. Have the coaching staff or your quarterback dial up your number, but I like that matchup. And I, the offensive coordinator in me, would take advantage of that right before the half. And uh, nothing takes the wind out of a visiting team sails much like the big deep ball. Here we go, Russell. He's got livers in motion. He's going to pitch it to him, and that play works well for John Harden when it's run well. And Valley snuffs it out, but Livers still gets positive yards. Yeah, great patience on the outside there by Steven Livers. The play wasn't quite developed when he got out there, and he was able to wait for a second, let that block develop, and pick up some yards before he was forced out by Williams. I think Livers lost a shoe. He did. He's got it in his hand. He's checking out. Somebody else is going to have to come in and play for him here. Got another update for you. North Harden is leading Meade County 14 to 12. 46.4 seconds until halftime. Malik Walter scores on an 18 yard run. Fort Knox leads Webster County 30 to nothing. Whoa, break them up. They're on a roll. Here we go, here's Russell. It's that, that screen pass again to Reinheimer and, and uh, one of Valley's defenders, let me get a number on him. He just single-handedly shut that down. That was a good football play. Caleb Lane was on that one. He got a, I believe he got the interception earlier, and he uh, sniffed that one out. Here's a name we've said quite a few times. 
Becker, 46 yard punt return set up his own four yard run. 28 to nothing, 124 left in the first quarter. Is that Joseph or Jay, do we know? It's probably going to be Joseph. I, earlier I was, I was talking about Joseph Becker being one of the most exciting players around, but when they have a lead, it could be his brother. We just don't know. Just, just assume that Becker scores the touchdown on that one, and uh, you'll probably be right on most times. They've got weapons there, and the, the thing about Elizabethtown is that they execute their plays well. They don't have the biggest team out there. They don't have the most athletic guys, but they do what they're supposed to do, and they're very reliable. And, you know, they run a few plays incredibly well, and when you execute your plays well, few teams can stop you. They've also, I don't, I don't want to knock them. They're a great football team. They've just really got a favorable schedule ahead of them. So I don't see anybody beating Elizabethtown until we get to playoffs. Um, that play was a hot mess, and that's coming back. Uh, it was a quarterback keeper, uh, but uh, I don't think – I think there were four or five guys that had different ideas of what the snap count was on that one. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the John Harden was ready to punt, and then a player lined up in the neutral zone from Valley. So John Harden moves forward, decides to take the snap, and then they make a procedural penalty back up again, so they, now they will punt. Valley hanging around, you know, when you're the home team and you're playing a team that you look at the uh, stats on the season, they're scoring five and a half points a, a game. You, you, you want to put those teams away in the first half. So that's not the case. This one is blocked by his own up back and uh, it's fielded by a Valley defender. And he may just take this one into, he does, takes it inside the 10 for John Harden and just like that. Valley, a team that only it scored 13 points last week. That was a season high. They have 14 now. It looked like the punter just fired that one into his own up back. Yeah, that was definitely a backfired play. And wow, what a series of events there. John Harden was going to punt. And then they don't because of an offsides. Then they bring the punter back out there, and that's just self-inflicted. We have used that term self-inflicted describing this Bulldog football team all season long. They, the talent is there, the desire is there, but uh, they just have done these things. And so I expect campus to run the football here at some point in time, but we've seen them throw too. Interesting to see what's going on. It's inside. Is that Walter back in the football game? It is. And he's swarmed on. If I can say anything about this Valley team is there's not a lot of there's not a lot of guesswork that John Harden has to do. If they can shut down campus and Walter, they're going to have a pretty good chance of keeping them out of the end zone. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, though, with this, uh, with all this going on, we're still in the first half, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. Like I said, when you give a team a chance to hang around like this, that's when bad things happen. You know, this is a team you should have put away early. Campus keeps it simple, rolls forward, and he might be into the end zone waiting for the signal. It is a touchdown. His entire team just pushed him forward. He's not a big guy at all, and so it wasn't him moving that pile. It was his big lineman, and they just drew it up that way. He got behind the center. They circled around him. They kind of went Spartan style and uh, took it into the end zone. And can you believe it, Drew? We've got we're gonna we have an opportunity to be, have a, see a tie game here. Yeah, we're an extra point away from being tied. I don't think any of us thought we were going to be here when we lined up for this game tonight. What a turn of events! I expected John Harden when they had the football on, on the. Uh, on the uh, other side of the field to double up on him, and th that just didn't happen. Kick is up, and it's good. 21-21. This is a Hardin County Educational Community Television student production. HCECTV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. eTownApartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at eTownApartments.com. Last week we saw Southwestern Pulaski County come into uh, Cecilia and kind of humiliate a Bruins team that we didn't see that game ending up like that. I mean, that was a mess. And... Uh, it seemed like something took place at halftime. There was just an absolute paradigm shift. And that Bruins team came out playing football, even though they were down, I believe it was 27 
to seven, 27 nothing, I think, at one point in time. It was, it was uh, we were talking about the clock was going to run in that football game, and all of a sudden it looked like a completely different game in the second half, and Central just fo- just ran out of time. They even recovered the onside kick at the end of that football game, had the, f- had the football at the end of the game, and had a chance to come back in it. So it's going to be interesting to see how John Harden responds. you got to find a guy on your team that's a senior that steps up in that locker room, slaps guys in the head and stuff, and says, hey, hey, this, this isn't happening here. A little, little lateral to Stephen Livers. A little bit of fun and games. Davis says, you're faster. Gives him the football, and he gets about eight more yards than, than, uh, than Davis would have. And uh, here we go. A little extracurricular activity up there about the 45-yard line between Satcher and a member of the Valley team. Satcher was a little unhappy and uh, gave him a little extra hard block. I've mentioned that. Davis has been single covered this entire football game. And with a minute 39 before going into the locker room, I wouldn't be surprised if this John Harden team took a shot to him and because nothing pumps you up more than a deep ball for a touchdown. And uh, once again, there's no, there's no real deep coverage on him. And I like that matchup. Here we go. I like that matchup too. Steven Livers around the right end. He's faster than everybody, and he's showing them. He initiates contact. Don't tell him he's not the biggest guy in the football field because he runs into linebackers. Great first down run. It's going to move the chains, but you were right. He did initiate contact. He lowered his head and just knocked through a Valley defender. you got to wonder something. Is this John Harden rushing def- offense going to start wearing down this Valley defense? Could this be a game where we see it close early and the Bulldogs pulling away late? We've seen games where this John Harden team just runs around the end and they basically say, try to stop us. And uh, that we could see the potential of that in the second half against a tired Valley Viking team. Here's Russell. He's looking short. No, he's going deep and he's got livers and uh, connects. No, can't connect with him. Looked like he had him. It looked like a good ball, but uh, that one might have got lost in the lights. Yeah, that I like it. Exactly what I was about to say. I think Livers lost it in the lights because you started to see him look around, and then the ball was there. Um, just about another connection. I tell you, Russell's going to hit him on one of these. He's going to hit Livers out here on the left sideline, and when he does, there's going to be no stopping him. Justin Russell's had his receivers put their hands on a couple of footballs today and not catch him. Statistically, he'd probably be looking a little bit better if some of these guys caught the football. But I want to give a tip of the cap to the coaching staff for drawing up that play. Everybody on that Valley team bit on the short toss that didn't happen. And uh, Russell had enough time to pump fake and let it fly. It just didn't work for the Bulldogs. And they're going to take a timeout here while they take a timeout. Talk to you about E-Town exterminating. 737-6900 737-6900 online at mugabug.com. West Point Bank, five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Find them online at westpointbank.com. Let them help make life simpler. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. Tonight's broadcast is an HCEC TV student production, a division of the Hardin County Schools. And I believe David's got our crew for this evening. C.J. Carroll is our director, student director, Sabrina Bergman, graphics, Gabe Stolkup, including the graphics you're looking at right now. That's Gabe. Tacoma, Yohala is uh, on audio, on the camera, Jaslyn and Alex. Jaslyn Barnes, Alex Greer. Well, I, I came in with a preconceived notion that this one was going to run away early, and uh, I think Valley uh, had other intentions. Um, you start to see the body language of a football team and and I'm talking about John Harden who's maybe a little surprised at what's going on right now you see guys they don't really have that whole upright look to them or whatever but I'll tell you what once again on this uh, on this short side we got single coverage on a split end I wouldn't be surprised to see him throw the football and they don't they go inside time's not their friend right now this is Livers Livers picks up nine they got a hop up to the line and call a football play. Yeah, I don't believe that it would be a good idea to just take this one to the half, but it almost looks like uh, John Harden was going to try that. Now they're going to go up, hurry up. And do it again. Should be a no, it might not be enough for a first down. That's going to keep the clock ticking. Not sure what their timeout count is right now. I unofficially had them taking two. I think they have one more. Russell needs to get his team set up and do something here. You don't want to leave time on the field and uh, at least take a shot. Yeah, there, I mean, it's... Well, is wide left, 23 seconds and counting. Like the matchup over here, they might decide to go deep. 
Here's Russell thinking about throwing, goes on a short toss to Davis. Davis going the wrong way, going laterally across the football field, fumbles the football. I don't think he was down, and it looks like Valley has picked up the football. They might actually have a chance for one toss before this half is over. I'm yep. not sure what was going on there. He ran laterally instead of taking the one yard for a first down, which would have stopped the clock. But uh, Yeah, I don't know what he was thinking there. He was, he was running backwards. He was running laterally, and it's just not something you can do. And then he lost possession of the ball when he got hit. Wow, what a what a turn of events! And if you're a Valley, if you uh, if you can get a little protection, you might try to take a shot at the end zone. Try to. I'm, I'm not sure I've seen a high school quarterback that can throw 51 yards to the end zone, but well, you know, not too long ago we saw South Warren come up here with Steve Spurrier's grandson at quarterback, and uh, that might have been the only guy that I've seen that that had the the mad skills to toss the ball 50 yards in the air to the end zone. That was impressive. He, he, he took a couple of shots against that central team, but uh, we've seen them run a, a little screen pass, and, and that might be something they're trying to do here. They also got a kicker that might take a long shot if they can just pick up 20 yards. Seven seconds isn't a long time, so you know, just going to try and make something happen here and not give up any kind of turnover. Here's Campus. He's just going to run with the football. He's going to try to set up. He points at somebody playground style, and he's going to get out of bounds, but not in time to run another play. Hey, we're going to go to halftime just as we started. Tied. 21-21, an exciting football game here at John Harden High School. I'm David Gary. With me, Drew Bernardi. Drew and Jesse are going to have the call in the second half for you. And uh, please stay with us as halftime takes place. We'll return to live coverage two minutes before halftime. We're back with Jason Raymer from Bluegrass Cellular. He is the district manager for the Bluegrass Cellular in our area. And Jason, thank you again for joining us. Uh, of course, Bluegrass Cellular has been a longtime sponsor of our live sports coverage. And HCEC TV and Brandenburg Telecom, we really appreciate that. Thank you. So thank you, and I know the athletes do. Um, tell us about, in the 20 years that cell phones have been an <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, we went from uh, a phone having a bag to it um, to now you can barely find it in your pocket. So uh, a different balance, I guess. It's a lot like cameras. We started big and now we're very <laughs> That's tight. Yeah, and I think for us, uh, seeing our customers change so drastically and the needs that they have for it um, to where everyone has a cell phone now. And so that need has changed so significantly that um, now we have uh, kids that are 12 years old with a need for a cell phone. In addition to that, you have some nationwide programs that are taking place. Talk yeah, about that. Yeah, so I think the, the number one thing that we want to understand is that um, our customers are not confined to E-Town or Kentucky or anything of that nature. And so we're doing a lot as a company right now for everyone to really understand that. And I think myself as an example, I, I, I play in Louisville on the weekends and I'm heading to Texas for family next month. And, and so uh, my phone works just as good there as it does here today. Well, that's that's awesome. To know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I think for me, uh, I just want to be confident in what we have for our customers and, and want them to understand that, that we're just as good as any other carrier, if not better, because we're local. Well, and, and the other thing is because you are local, if they have any questions or issues, they can come right in. Yeah, that's right. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that we're the ones giving back to the community because we are local. And, and so that investment um, is not only us and into, uh, into the, our company, but um, we're giving back to them as well. As longtime supporters of live sports programming on uh, Brandenburg uh, Telecom's Channel One, why do you feel it's important to give back to the community in that way? Uh, for us, we don't want to forget where we came from. And, and so we have been built and, and we have built our business around this community and, and this community is our business. And so for us, it's, uh, it's just the right thing to do to be able to give back to those that, that have committed uh, their time, effort and money to us. And we want to be able to do that same thing. And, and that's what this initiative has allowed us to do um, year in, year out. For those that may not know, how can they get in touch with you? Well, uh, bluegrasscellular.com, obviously our website. Uh, we have many locations here locally, so two here in E-Town, uh, both off Ring Road, one at Ring Road in uh, Dixie and then one at the other end there. Um, and then as well, uh, locations in Radcliffe, uh, Brandenburg, as well as in Campbellsville here locally. Awesome. Well, again, thank you for joining us. And now we're going to get back to the ball game. Hello to HCEC TV's live sports broadcast. 
Of course, we are sponsored in part by many local businesses, and we're really thrilled to bring you an upcoming season that is packed with some great competition. Joining me today is one of Brandenburg Telecom's sponsors, along with HCEC TV, is Karen Collard, who is the property manager at eTownApartments.com. Now, in addition to being the property manager, Karen, you also have a familiar tie to uh, eTownApartments.com. Talk about that. Yes, I do. My brother, Mark Harris, and I do this together. He's with the construction. He does the construction and builds everything that we rent. We have uh, that gives us the ability to build what we see the community has a need for. We've got everything from single level one bedrooms. We've got two, three, and four bedrooms, duplexes, townhomes, apartments, single family homes, brand new construction family homes. Uh, it's it gives me a, a, some diverse stuff to offer the community as well. That's great. Now, since our last taping, you've got some new properties that you want to share with Yes, us. we do. We're very excited to be expanding. We have already expanded to Bardstown, Hodgenville, and that has gone over great. We stay full in those communities. We've got new property out on Ring Road, right in the center of Elizabethtown, Tunnel Hill Park Apartments. They are our two-bedroom, two-bath location. Uh, those are managed by Amy Smogert, and it just uh, has gone over super great. We're so grateful to the community. Now, why have you feel, feel that it's important to branch out? Well, we just keep seeing the need. With more and more people are going toward renting now, that a lot of folks are wanting to get away from the home maintenance and things of that nature. So more and more people, and, and as our factories are growing, we have more and more need, people coming new to the area, they wanna get settled in, find out where they wanna be to call their permanent home. And um, we've just, and we've branched out to Bardstown and Hodgenville because we've seen the need there. That both great communities, Bardstown's voted one of the great small communities in, in the nation. So we are very proud to be part of that. Um, now I'm assuming in addition to a variety of properties, you have a variety of, of uh, pricing. We do, we do, and we, we've got a lot of great specials going on right now. With any of the, the rates you see on our website, it's you get a $100 discount per month on rent if you do a 12-month lease and auto pay from a checking, which that has gone over great. Uh, the prices range anywhere starting at $549 a month, and, and it goes on up depending on what your needs are. And then uh, we have a deposit special. Uh, only a $299 deposit special with approved credit, and if, you, if you're looking to move right away, we can take care of that as well. Now, are any of your um, available uh, leasings, are, they, are, uh, are any of them furnished? We can do that. Uh, usually those are just something that corporate level people are doing when they're coming to town for a short amount of time and uh, just with some advance notice, we can do that as well. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, um, people that want to contact you, you have a, a few ways that they can get in touch, so share that information. We have several avenues. They, they can call, of course, our, our numbers, easy to remember, 270-268-RENT, which is 7368. They can text, they can email us at etownapartments.com, etownapartments at AOL, but the uh, best way to stay in touch with us when you can also see what we have to offer is through our Facebook, E-Town Apartments on Facebook. That has just been a great resource for us. Well, you've been a long time sponsor for our high school sports. Uh, we could not do what we do without that sponsorship, so we really appreciate that. Why do you feel it's important to stay connected with the high school community? Well, you know, that's the next generation, and that's our opportunity to, to thank the community as well for, for giving us such an opportunity to grow as a, as a family business. But then that next generation, they're coming up, you know, and we have those first-time renters coming up going to ECTC. We have one bedrooms right across the street from there. And uh, we just, of course, we are sports enthusiasts as a family, so we, we love being part of it. Well, it definitely supports what we do and also our students that. <laughs>
This has been a Hunting County Educational Community Television student production. Live local sports are on Brandenburg Telecom Channel 1 and all of Reed broadcast are on Brandenburg and Comcast Cable's Channel 2, Spectrum Communications Channel 184, and on our YouTube site. Also check out our live sporting events on nfhs.com or visit us at hudden.k12.ky.us. Hudding County Educational and Community Television located in Hudding County, Kentucky, a division of Hudding County Schools. Airing on Brandenburg, Comcast, and Spectrum, and also streaming online. Providing live coverage of local high school sports. Covering community and school events. While teaching students along the way. HCEC TV, the area's leading educational and government access channel. Training the next generation of media arts students. Control your home even when you're not there with Brandenburg Telecom's home automation service. Turn lights on and off, lock and unlock doors, and change settings on your thermostat using your smartphone or tablet. Stop worrying whether or not you remember to close the garage door and save money by programming your thermostat to reduce energy used when you're not home. Call Brandenburg Telecom for a free quote and enjoy the convenience of having home automation, phone, TV, and internet service, all from one local company. All right, son, you ready to open your first savings account? Yes, I am. West Point Bank has been growing with our customers for over 30 years. We know what it takes to support them in every stage of their life. You need a bank that you know and trust to help you reach your goals and make your dreams come true. West Point Bank, hometown banking made simple. You have a choice, because not all physical therapy is the same. So when you need physical therapy, come to the one chosen as Hardin County's Reader's Choice winner four years in a row. We are always working to better educate and stay ahead of the latest advancements in physical therapy. Physical therapy can get you back doing what you love to do. If you're experiencing pain, loss of mobility, or just want to feel better, come see us at Physical Therapy Associates in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Hodgenville, and Welcome back to John Harden High School. We are looking at a tie ball game. The homestanding John Harden Bulldogs 21. The visiting Louisville Valley Vikings also with 21. I'm Drew Bernardi here on Play by Play. Joining me for color commentary now is Jesse Bird, who's been our spotter all night. Jesse, a little bit of an interesting game we're seeing tonight, a little bit uh, different than we thought it was going to turn out. Yeah, this is definitely not how I expected this game to turn out. I was expecting... Witherspoon to come out. Stephen Lobbers kind of run away with the score, but Valley's held in there. They're kind of running back and forth. You had a few mistakes on both sides of the ball, but overall it's been a wonderful game to watch in the first half. You know, you mentioned mistakes. John Harden's had their share of mistakes. They've had a couple of costly turnovers. They've had a couple of plays that didn't go right as well. We've seen Valley make a couple of mistakes as well, but they've capitalized on John Harden's mistake, and I believe that is the difference in this game. That's what it's going to take is really taking these opportunities, capitalizing on them, and seeing what you can do to score. I mean, that's what Valley's done. That's why the game's tied. We're going in basically the same way we were at the beginning of the game. I mean, we're, we've got an even score on another half of football. So I'm interested to see what they come out. I mean, Valley's getting the ball first. Yeah, the good news if you're a Valley Vikings fan, the, the Vikings deferred after winning the toss, and they will get the ball. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools Live. Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom. Providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical therapy associates. More personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Etownapartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. Bluegrass Cellular, offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere. Or Wireless Works, visit us at bluegrasscellular.com. And Etown Exterminating, 737-6900, online at mugabug.com. John Harden is going to be kicking off. They're in the home black and red jerseys. They're going to be moving right to left on your television screen. And the all-white jerseys with the purple or blue helmets. It's going to be the Valley Vikings. They're moving left to right on your screen. 
definitely interested to see what this kick's going, what they're going to do on this kick right here. Valley's going to take the ball. They're going to try to capitalize on this, on this return. See how far the ball even goes down the field on this kick here. Ball leaned kind of back, so we look to see them try to boot it deep here. Valley's got a couple of exciting return guys back there. It'll be interesting to see if one of them can get their hands on the ball. Here's the run up in the boot. We started the second half. And that one's going to go out of bounds, so that's going to be some pretty good field position for Valley. But with that exciting running back for Valley we saw back there, Walker definitely don't want to kick it in his direction, so this may be the best thing for the John Harden Bulldogs. Yeah, that's how I would play it. It's not in a bad field position right there to start off for your defense. Biggest Valley struggled as far as the game is actually making a run down fully down the field. It's been a lot of turnover situations to keep them on field, good field position. So I'm interested to see if they're really going to take it all the way down the field on this drive. Valley doesn't have a very long field challenge, but it is going to be longer than the ones that they've scored on today. Most of their scores coming off of short fields. And they're going to come out in a pistol formation. They've got trips out on the left side. He's going to put a sidecar to his left. It's like John Harden showed the blitz, come in, missed the Big tackle. Big rush by John goal. Harden with missed tackles, and Walter's going to get near a first down. I think he's going to be down at least a yard short, if not a yard and a half short. But a great rush by the John Harden defense, but poor tackling. We've kind of seen that a little bit tonight on this John, from this John Harden team. It's been a big cost. I mean, you have the running back breaking off something like that. You can't let the running back chunk those away. And even on the quarterback rollouts, they've several times he should have been sacked in the backfield. You've got to take that advantage and stop the ball in the backfield. It's going to be second down and one. Ball on the 45-yard line. They're going to go in this uh, modified pistol, almost a shotgun formation. They've got receivers stacked up on both sides. It's a handoff. No, it's a fake. Out to the left side, he's got a first down. He's got more. He's up to midfield. What a great tackle by John Harden to avoid that being broken off. I thought for sure he was going to be gone, and that's going to be a first down for the Valley Vikings. That was one tackle away from a touchdown there. Like I said, that was another thing. Should have been picked up on the screen on the outside. Tackle could have been made and maybe gave them a two-yard gain. Instead, okay. he turned it into a first down. A great open field tackle by this John Harden defense. You know, that's what you want to see, but you'd rather not see it be a first down before they make that tackle. No, that's, not, that's never what you want to see. Valley's going to line up again. They've got that same split receiver look with a man in the backfield. Campbell's going to take it. He's going to hand it off right up the middle, and John Harden was not fooled at all, and they swarm to the ball on that. It's going to be about a two-yard loss on that run. So if you're struggling to make individual tackling, team tackling is going to be the way to go. Bust your linebackers through the line. Get your line through. Swarm the ball. Make the tackle in the backfield. Stop the play. Great penetration on that by that John Harden defensive front, and they're actually going to give him back to the original line of scrimmage. So that's going to bring up second and ten. Ball still on the 45-yard line. Excuse me, he's only 49. Valley taking their time a little bit on this drive. Not, no need to get any hurry. You got a still full, full half of football left. Yeah, they're definitely not gonna. They're not in any hurry. No need to panic. You're, you're tied up. They're gonna go trips to the near side with a receiver split out up top. Looking for a short two-yard screen here. Possible run up the middle as well. He's gonna take the snap. He's gonna fake the run. He's gonna throw. It's a short pass. A little bit of heat from the John Harden defense, and now we've got a flag. So they were trying to get everything stopped over there. Looked like a, big, a bit of a horse collar tackle right there. And we wait for the referee's call. Good throw out to the flat there off the fake. It's going to be a hold against Valley, and that's the kind of, it's kind of penalty that can kill a drive, isn't it? Yeah, you can't sit there and let that happen. You've you've drove down the field a little bit. Not a huge progress, but I mean you're you're borderline of making it on their side of the fifty yard line. You've got to make it over there. You can't have those little mistakes. So it's gonna be second and twenty. We're gonna back them up to the thirty nine yard line. Again, Valley taking their time in the huddle. This is where I'd like to see a short pass to Walter to see maybe if he can break it away on the outside a little bit and take advantage of this hole in the defense. Go three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. He's got a man to his right as a protector. 
John Harden showed a little bit of blitz. They're going to bring it, and nowhere to go for Campo. He's going to be sacked. That was Kenneth Satcher again. Satcher's been a name that's been talked about all night long, and he's making his name heard. Satcher has been all over the field tonight, and he is making plays and just – just running all over the field. What a great play on that one. He was able to get the pressure and bring down the quarterback. While we're waiting for them to, while they're waiting for them to uh, come out of the, this is a student production of HCEC TV on Brandenburg Telecom. Brandenburg Telecom providing service for all your telecommunication needs. He's going to go into this modified pistol like he has been. The guy kind of behind him. Three receivers down to the near side. John Harden with that 4-3. It's a quick pass. No, it's a draw, and he stumbled. I think he tripped over his own lineman there, Jesse. Yeah, I don't think there was any John Harden Bulldogs there to break up that play. And he is down, so we've got while well, we've got a player down. Like I said, this is a Harden County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools Live. Channel 1 programming is sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all of your telecommunications needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com and etownapartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. Jesse, we've seen John Harden bring a little bit of the heat on these plays. That's created a punting situation. Fourth in the state of Montana <laughs> for Valley. Definitely going to be good field position for John Harden. Let's see how he gets far he gets his punt. Snap was a little bit high, and the kick is way high, and I believe that is going to come down, take a oh Bulldogs boy. bounce, nobody around there, and it's going to roll dead at about the 39-yard line, and that's not what you want to see. That ball was back farther than the original line of scrimmage. John Harden's going to have a short field challenge here. That's some great field position right there. And I'll tell you what, if you're the John Harden Bulldogs offense, that's exactly what you want to see because now's when you want to start to pull away. You want to start wearing down that Valley defense. It's the best way to do it. Well, I wonder, we spoke, you and David spoke earlier talking about Valley and the, the lack of depth they have compared to John Harden on the roster. And you're seeing that somewhat way it's wearing down the defense and the offense, a little more on the defensive side with some of these players laying down, being a little slower to get up. Run off to the left side, and it's going to be it's gonna be a big gain, of probably eight or nine yards. That looked like it was kind of contained in the backfield, but yeah. he was able to reverse direction, find a little bit of a seam, and it's going to be about a gain of six. It's going to bring up second and short, and that's the kind of things you want to see out of your offense. You don't want to have these second and long, third and long situations. So when you can tick off six of them in one play, that's how you want to start a drive off. All right, you ground and pound a defensive line. I mean, that's a quick way to wear them down, which, I mean, that's what you want to do. You want to, as John Harden, you want to wear down that defense, get the defensive line done. You take away the pressure at that point by tiring them out. You give the quarterback more than enough time to hang out in the pocket and throw it deep and look for that touchdown downfield. Russell under center. And he's going to give it straight up the middle to Reinheimer, and that's not a, a run that's been very effective today. Uh, they've been having to kind of bounce him off of tackle or, or move him to the outside to get any chunk of yards. Gain of two there, really tough sledding. This Valley defense has got that middle sealed up. Drew, I'd like to make a note real quick. Um, referring back to your keys of the game, great forms you typed up for us. Talked about the dynamic duo, Anthony Witherspoon and Steven Livers. How, how productive have they been on offense today? I tell you, it's been all I, – I haven't seen Witherspoon out there. I don't think he's out there. But here goes Livers. You just mentioned him. He's breaking it off. He's at the 10, the 5, touchdown, Stephen Livers. That was all I needed to say. Speak right away there. shall appear. Stephen <laughs> Livers broke that one off. It seemed like he was surrounded by Valley players. And next thing you know, he squirted into the secondary. 10-5, touchdown. And John Harden's going to take a 27 to 21 lead with the extra point pending, and that is exactly what we were talking about. You know, I, I mentioned earlier, Stephen Livers accounts for 39.5 percent of John Harden's offense over the first six games. That's a lot. That's that's something you don't see with a single player. That's that's a true key player right there. And Stephen Livers just showed me he didn't want me talking about him and saying he wasn't being very productive tonight. 
He proved me wrong on that drive right there. Extra point is up and good. John Harden goes up 28-21. This is an HCEC TV student production of Division of the Harden County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, eTown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Tonight, our crew, I'm Drew Bernardi. Next to me on color commentary is Jesse Bird. Camera one is Jaslyn Barnes. Cam two, Alex Greer. Audio, Tacoma Yohala. Graphics, Gabe Stolkup. Student director, Sabrina Bergman. And director, CJ Carroll. They're doing a fantastic job tonight. We've got touchdown graphics. We've got sponsor graphics coming up when they need to. It's been a fairly competitive game tonight. A lot more competitive than I think we thought when we were coming into this. But now you might be seeing this John Harden offense start to pull away a little bit, start to get a little momentum behind them. Let's give a scoring update real quick for that Fort Knox game. Fort Knox scores again. Heller Vill Hector Villampando scores on a nine-year run, nine-yard run with 7.19 left in the third. Fort Knox leads Webster County 36-0. And just as I say that, it's a great return for Valley. They're going to be up near the 40-yard line. When you have dynamic returners back there, you want to try to avoid kicking it to them, and uh, John Harden kicked it right to him and he was able to make a lot of ground up there now if you're valley you have a midfield challenge you're all you're almost to the 40 yard line i think they've got him marked down at the 36 yard line you've got to go down and score on this drive you have got to keep up with john harden because if you give the ball back to him they're just going to score on you again and then you're in a situation where they're just going to pull away you can't leave the field leave John Hart in this kind of field position here. You've got to show that your offense still has some momentum that it had in the first half and break past that 50-yard line. Look for him to possibly look downfield here. And it's going to be a sneak right up the middle, and he's going to get a chunk of yards. It's like about a four- or five-yard gain. Campos right up the middle. And that's something that we've seen work against John Harden. Um, they, they've been moving outside to contain the outside run, but that leaves a big gap right up the middle when you're playing that 4-3 defense. It takes your linebacker right there. you got your two inside linebackers, but the Mike's got to make that call. He's got to be able to sit there and recognize, look at the defense, and adjust his formation to that. But this is also a time where the defensive line has to read that. Watch that quarterback. Look at him lining up under center and see if you put that pressure right there, you're not going to allow the, defense, the quarterback to make that much pressure right there to the defensive line. He's going to look like he was going to audible out for a second. He's going to go back under center, looking to throw all the way. Throws, and it's off target, a little bit behind the receiver, just beyond the first down marker. That's going to bring up third down for the Valley Vikings. And, you know, they've got the ball in 31. It's third and six. You're in, you don't want to give up the ball to John Harden here, but you can probably go for it on fourth down if you can pick up enough yards. If it's third and six, third and seven, you think about, or if it comes up to fourth and six, fourth and seven, you're going to think about punting here. But if you can get it to fourth and two, fourth and one, you're definitely going to think about going for it. If I'm, on, if I'm sitting on fourth and three and I've got Campos, I'm putting him under, under the center, and I'm going to go ahead and let him drag the pile like he's been doing earlier today and just get that first down. Three but receivers to the near side. Shotgun with a sidecar. And uh, that's going to be a false start penalty. That's going to back him up five. It's going to be third and well, 11. Good job the, by John Harden's defensive line staying there, not jumping on that. Yeah, very good job. I think they went with the hard count, and one of the receivers uh, not quite in on it, and he took off running down the field. You can't do that, and that's going to be a procedural penalty for the Valley Vikings. Again, that's one of those drive-killing penalties that you just can't have. These simple mistakes is going to be what's going to kill them. You're playing a ball game a lot different than what the scores have shown you've done all season long. This is one where you need to stop making those mistakes and show that you're a more developed football team than what you have been this season. John Harden shows the blitz and does bring it. Big rush. He's hit. He's sacked back near the 31-yard line. And that's going to bring up fourth and a lot. That was Ty Nelson on that. He's been a playmaker we've heard several times tonight. He's making his presence known. Ty Nelson had an interception earlier in the game that stopped a Valley drive in its tracks. And now he makes a big sack to stop another one. And if you're Valley, you can't go for it on this, on this type of distance. So they are going to punt. And now is when John Harden can really take control of this game and put a dagger in the heart of the Valley Vikings. The biggest question right here is how are they going to punt it? Is he going to go straight up and bounce? 
like last time, or is it going to be a little bit longer drive punt? I'm glad to see that you kicked it right to him. He's yeah, they kicked it up. right to Steven Livers, and he fair caught it. I don't think he had enough blockers around, and I don't think he wanted to have a hit laid on him. So John Harden will take over right at their own 35-yard line. Bulldogs will take over at their own 35-yard line. And I tell you, you know, Jesse, as we uh, as we look at this game right now, John Harden has they've got the lead. They've got 4.49 left in the third quarter, and now they've got the ball back. What do you look to see out of this John Harden offense on this drive? Time management, honestly. Here, I mean, it's still – you could say it's a little early. We're sitting with four minutes and 49 seconds left in the third, like you said. But I'm going to manage the clock. I'm going to run the ball. I'm going to run it down the throat. I'm going to make the defense tired. I'm going to look for that big play opportunity. But, I mean, when you've got the time to run the clock down like that, take it into the fourth quarter, run this clock down, wear Valley out. And just as you say that, Russell rolls out to the left side with a pass. It was intended for Davis, but a uh, little short there. It came up a little short. And I think Davis wanted to flag because he got popped in the back as he was waiting for that to come down. But uh, I think they're going to rule that ball uncatchable, and that's why he didn't get the flag for it. Keep an eye on Davis. He's just outside. He's way outside the formation right now. He's going to line up. They've got man coverage down here, but I think they've got a safety shading over to this side to try to keep an eye on Davis, who's been such an explosive playmaker. They've been playing that man coverage all night, and I'm wondering... And there goes Reinheimer. Reinheimer's got a first down off that simple off-tackle run. Straight, you know, not exactly up the middle, but not exactly to the outside. And what a great play by Reinheimer to get a first down. Bulldogs are going to be snapping the ball from their logo nearly on the 50-yard line. You can see Valley's defense starting to wear down a little bit now. Quick substitution for the defensive end. Russell hands off. Reinheimer escapes the tackle. He's going to try to get break. He breaks out to the right side. He's got blockers ahead of him. He's got livers ahead of him. And we've got flags in the backfield. I believe we're going to get a holding penalty on the Bulldogs. I don't, you don't expect that kind of reverse field play out of Reinheimer, but he... He got he stepped out of a couple of tackles, shoved off a couple of defenders, and then took off. But I think this one's going to come back for the Bulldogs. So simple penalties. There's been quite a few penalties come back in this game this tonight. Yeah, there were several flags that flew. I saw I count three on the field currently. Let's take a and moment to give you an update. A little legal chop block. Give you an update on this Meade County North Harden game. He got bad with his third touchdown. He runs in for a two-pointer. Meade County leads North Harden Trojans 20-14 with 3.27 left in the third quarter. You know, Babs, a player we saw a couple weeks ago here on HCC TV. He is an explosive runner, and you don't want to leave him with any space. You know, we saw him in that game take one, nearly take one of the house. Uh, unfortunately, he was tackled and fumbled that ball. But Bab is somebody, if you give him space, he's like Stephen Livers. He will take off. But unlike Stephen Livers, Bab, a little stockier. He'll take some defenders with him. So they get a timeout on the field. No nope, flag. Looks like we're going to get a flag on. Looks like it's going to be on John Harden. Looks like we're going back a little farther. Yep, looks like a delay of game, maybe. And uh, so John Harden backing up, going the wrong direction down the field. If I'm Valley, I want to slow him down and hold him down here. I yeah, want to, you do, definitely. I want to force him to punt, and I want the ball given to me, at least on the in, this their side of the 40-yard line. The It's going to be Russell rolling out to the left, and he fires it down the field. Got his man. It's Livers. Livers to the 40. He's going to get a big chunk of that down as he's twisted down by the Valley defense. I was about to say, oh, and we've got another flag on the play, it looks like. We've got something in the backfield here. It looks like it's probably going to be holding on John Harden, and uh, this just keeps getting worse. Yeah, it definitely looked, yeah, it was another holding call coming down in the backfield like that. Uh, it doesn't look like it was a holding call, but it is a penalty on the John Harden offense, and they're going to be stepping back again. And, and, you know, as we look at this, John Harden now is backed up inside their own 15. The first down marker is into Valley territory. You know, they're on their own 16. 
The first down marker is all the way at the Valley 42-yard line, so you've got a long way to go. It's first down and 42 for the Bulldogs. And they're going to spread them out. Nobody in the backfield for Russell. He takes the snap. He looks. He waits. It's going to be a screen that just goes nowhere. I believe he was uh, he had the pressure in his face and tried to throw it to Reinheimer, and uh, nothing but defenders around that ball. Uh, Reinheimer was a little bit off there. Valley knew what they had to do on that draw. I mean, you had to break down the coverage. You can't give them anywhere to throw that ball to. So the screen pass did not work. They're going to bring back their two speedy guys. We've got Davis and Livers coming back onto the field. They're going to be split down here to the near side. Reinheimer in a shotgun. He's got a protector to his left. Excuse me, standing behind him, it looks like. Reinheimer going to throw, or Russell going to throw, excuse me. And he was looking for Steven Livers, and it was just in front of him. That's going to bring up third and 42 for the John Harden Bulldogs. At this point, you kind of want to just get some yards back for the ensuing punt because unless Steven Livers can break off another one, third and 42 is not going to be something you can convert on. No, not unless you're breaking something off that's really special here. To, and that, and that's a touchdown play at that point. If you're breaking off to even get a first down on third 32, you might as well turn into a touchdown at that point. So I'm trying to gain some yards back so my kicker doesn't have to punt the ball that far. Yeah, you don't want to put it this close to your own goal line. Bad things can happen, and if they happen, it's going to be a touchdown. Russell looking to throw. Fires out. He's got Davis. Davis is up to the 25, up to the 30, and what did we just say? Davis is off to the races. 30, 25, 20. They're not going to catch him. Touchdown, Bulldogs. What a play. You just said it, Jesse. That's about mm -hmm. the second time you've Tony Romo to play on us. <laughs> and he did. He took off. And as soon as he got past the 30, it was a foot race to the end zone. And I don't think Valley's got a defender that could have caught Davis at that point. What a play by the John Harden Bulldogs. He was gone. Like I said, even if you're if you're coming close to getting that first down right there, you might as well be scoring the touchdown for that kind of breakaway. 84-yard touchdown pass to Davis on third and 42. I've seen some interesting things, and that was a uh, – Definitely an interesting one. If I'm Valley, I've got a broken heart right now after seeing that happen. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. It's and it's a 14-point lead for the John Harden Bulldogs, scoring 14 unanswered to start the second half. 3.39 left in the third quarter. This game has turned on a dime. It really has. I and honestly, that could have went a polar opposite direction there. Having them get the ball back, you got third and 32. They run it down to get a touchdown. It could have easily been a scenario where you bust it down to fourth down. Punt it, and Valley gets the ball back on the John Harden side of the 50, looking in good field position. Tonight's broadcast is an HCEC TV student production, Division of Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Tune in weekly for rebroadcasts of all local HCC TV programs on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable's Channel 2, Spectrum and Communications Channel 184. Web stream service of this post of this coverage is also provided with written permission of the Kentucky High School Athletic Association and the National Federation of High School Sports. You can also catch them on their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash HGEC TV. John Harden's going to line up for this. There was a penalty after the kick, and that is going to allow John Harden to kick off from the Valley side of the field. So they're probably thinking touchback here. They've got the ball leaned back. Looks like they are going to attempt to kick it deep. They're going to kick off from the Valley 45-yard Valley line. And here comes the run-up. And he boots it, and it is indeed going to go into the end zone. Goes over the uprights, I believe. <laughs> That's going to be a touchback. The field goal is good, Drew. The field goal is good. <laughs> Unfortunately, they do not get points for that. This isn't Canadian football. <laughs> I watched a little bit of that. I was in Canada last summer. Set up there, watched some of those games. 
You know, speaking of Canadian football, that's something I like to watch in the summer because I am football deprived. I get a little <laughs> sad when it's not football season. I, I do too. You know, it's, you, it's a little bit different rules in Canada, but uh, hey, it's football. It counts the same. That's why they run arena football in, in the summer is because, hey, it's football. Valley's going to come out here on their own 20-yard line. They've got the long field challenge. They're going to go in that modified shotgun with a man to their left. They've got two receivers split out to the near side, one to the far side. Looking at John Harden coming with that 4-3, showing a blitz here. They are showing the blitz. Looks like they're going to draw it back. A little adjustment there. And they bring an extra man, and that run is going to go nowhere. Stuffed by the John Harden defense at the 20-yard line. And you mentioned it earlier, the fatigue, the attrition. I believe it might be starting to get to the Valley Vikings because John Harden had no problem shutting down that run. No, they came in on that blitz, and they swarmed. It was a, that, was a, that was a team tackle there. That wasn't one man. That was a team taking advantage and stopping Valley like they needed to do at the line of scrimmage. He found a wall of black and red when he tried to cross the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second and ten. Ball still on the 20-yard line. In a split two out on each side. It's a play-action fake. He's looking, and I believe that got swatted down at the line of scrimmage, but a flag yes, on the play. It's a chop block, block down, side, down on the inside on the defensive line. That's going to be taking Valley back a little bit further. That's a that's a bad play already when your mm -hmm. ball when the ball gets swatted down doesn't even make it out of the pocket. I tell you what, having played defensive end previously in defensive line at Central Harden, chop blocks aren't fun. You don't like having the offensive lineman's helmet shoulder pad coming at your shins like that. Yeah, chop block will be on Valley and they're gonna back up. Valley go in the wrong direction like we've seen John Harden, but I I don't think that they've got the same explosive big playability that John Harden has. They haven't shown it this this game except for defensive started plays. You know, when they start a drive with the defense doing something. Uh, they had an explosive special teams play earlier where they blocked a John Harden field goal. Um, stuff like that. They're not as good creating the, these big explosive plays on offense. If you give them a short field, they can work with it. But when it's a long field, they seem to struggle. I think it's the mentality of sitting here looking at the distance they've got to go, and it's really wearing them down. I mean, you've got to play, look five yards at a time, one Shotgun first snap. down at a time. It's going to be play action. It's going to be a little short pass that he drops. They're going to call it incomplete. I think uh, John Harden was rushing up like they thought it was a lateral that he dropped, and it, and that's good good defensive discipline by John Harden when you see that happen because if they don't rush up to that ball. If it is a, a backwards pass that it's fumbled, he could pick it up and run with it. I'll tell you what, I actually saw that one time playing a JV game in high school. I believe we were in Meade County. Threw a little screen. It happened to be a backwards lateral pass. Ball got dropped. Our corner didn't pick up on it. Receiver picked it back up, ran it down, had a touchdown. Let's get it now. John Harden. They've got third and 20 for the Valley Vikings. Crowd's starting to get a little loud here. Bulldog Stadium. I like the excitement from these John Harden fans. Shotgun, a protector in the backfield. Four receivers, two split out on each side. It's going to bring a receiver in close. And it's going to be a fake jet sweep that John Harden was in no way, shape, or form fooled by. And that's going to be a one-yard gain for the Valley Vikings. They're, they're going to give them two. So we're going to bring up fourth. And 18 for the Valley Vikings as they bring the punt unit on. And if you're John Harden, you're now taking control of this game with just over two minutes left in the third quarter. Clock management. Clock management. The clock is your biggest opponent now as you are up two scores on Valley, who is having to punt in the shadow of their own goalposts. You know, we were talking earlier uh, about Anthony or about Stephen Livers. And uh, he has eight touchdowns on the year combined, rushing and receiving. And now he's back here. He's standing at his own midfield marker. I bet he'd like to bust off a punt return touchdown as well. Oh, Pat, no sets a little bit. Take advantage. I mean, you're already getting the ball in good field position. Snap is good. And this one's going to go straight up in the air. And it's going to bounce out at about the – rolls dead at about the 31-yard line. And uh, – 
I think he was under a little bit of pressure on that one. Didn't get, wasn't able to get the kick on it. He wants seemed to come off the side of his foot. Shot straight up in the air, and uh, John Harden Bulldogs are going to get this right at about. Looks like about there. Looks like about the 32-yard line on the Viking side of the ball, and you got to wonder if they're going to take a shot for a backbreaker touchdown to put this one away. That's what I'd be looking for. John Harden coming out in a close formation. And it's Livers in motion, but they're going to give it to Reinheimer. Reinheimer's got uh, quite a bit of yards. He picks up a huge chunk of yards. It's going to be about eight yards on the carry. I'll tell you what, I like watching Reinheimer run. That's my kind of running back. I, like, I admire a power running back that just kind of pulls the pile. Yeah, he's a power running back. He's kind of got that uh, got that Jerome Bettis run to him. He's hard to bring down. He puts a lot of momentum behind him. Uh, he's not really a fullback, though. A little fast, a little small to be a fullback, but he, he's a power runner, and uh, that's just good old-fashioned football. That's the kind of guy you want to have the ball when you're trying to run the clock down. Rather elusive, but can break it away and get you another score. Here goes Livers off the left side, and he's trying to break tackles. He's going to be close to a first down. Keeps the pile moving, and now he definitely has the first down. And now John Harden, and look, and you can tell if you take a look at this Valley team, they are uh, they're tired. They're they're not wanting to get up after tackles. They're exhausted. Bulldogs are entering the red zone now. They are on their own, or the, the Valley 17-yard line going in, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. Checking the rest. I, I believe they're going to try to get one play off before we end this third quarter. Russell is going to go under center. He's got Reinheimer and Livers behind him. It's a run with a Reinheimer, and he's going to pick up a couple yards, but uh, well, tough sledding right, right up the middle there. So as we hit the end of the third quarter, I'd like to remind you that this is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all of your telecommunication needs. Physical therapy associates, more personal attention for more effective results. The locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Etownapartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. Bluegrass Cellular offering the most affordable and limited plan anywhere. Where wireless works, visit us at bluegrasscellular.com. Drew Bernardi here on the call tonight. With me is Jesse Bird. On camera one is Jaslyn Barnes. On camera two is Alex Greer. On audio is Tacoma Yohala. Graphics Gabe Stolkup. Student director is Sabrina Bergman. Director C.J. Carroll, as we enter the fourth quarter here, John Harden is threatening again. They've got a 14-point lead over the Valley Vikings. Jesse, do you have any score updates for us? Looks like we had an update at the North Harden Mead County game. Tavian Starks from one. Field goal is good, or the point after good after that. North Harden now leading 21-20 with four seconds left in the fourth quarter. Four seconds into the fourth quarter. Excuse me. Um, it's a valid point. <laughs> prep football. How about this one? Love Grimes, 27-yard run. E-Town leads 40, 56 to nothing after the third quarter. I think we can go ahead and call that one for E-Town. Uh, they are dominating. and this, this is something we see every week out of E-Town. They <laughs> seem to have no problem running through teams. Definitely strong coaching there by former John Harden coach Brown. Doing a wonderful job running that program. Great quarterback over there as well with Tyler Durbin. Love watching that guy play. Russell is going to go under center here. He's got Reinheimer in the back. And they're going to fake it to him. He's going to roll out to the right. He's got a man in the end zone, and it's a, intercepted. Whoa. And Valley is coming back with it. That's the kind of play you need to spark your offense. You have to capitalize on that if you want to maintain this game. Russell was looking for Kenneth Satcher in the end zone, the defensive end that's also a tight end. And... Just you saw the Valley defender undercut it. It was intercepted. He got it back out to the 15-yard line. So now it's going to be interesting to see if the Valley offense can make something happen after this. We've got we're 10 seconds into the fourth quarter. This game is far from over. You've got you're down by 14. You've got a score on this drive. You've got to admire the double covers there. 
Yeah, the safety's shading off a little bit, just enough to pick up the coverage, so he's kind of floating there. The quarterback doesn't read the possibility of the safety coming in for that double coverage. He looks like he's got an open receiver in the end zone. The safety comes up, intercepts the ball, takes it. That's a great read by the defense. Read Shotgun it. formation. It's going to be a quick throw out to the right and just about had a John Harden pick six on that play. That number 15 for John Harden cut to the inside of that route and just about picked that ball off. If he picks that ball off, he's got nothing but open field and goal line in front of him. John Harden trying to keep this Valley defense, uh, Valley team from getting back into this, back into this game. Campos got a slow, slow the offense down a little bit. Take your time. You still got 11 minutes. You're still in this ball game. Campos is going to go out of the shotgun. He's got a man to his right. Receivers split out on either side. Two to the near side. Two to the far side. And he gets the snap. And he's going to run it right up the middle, and John Harden was having none of that. Extremely tough sledding up the middle all night for this Valley team. And uh, what a great play by the by the John Harden Bulldogs. Beautiful read on that blitz to pick that up, take advantage of a slow, slow forming play by the offense to get that tackle on the backfield. Yeah, you know, when you see a play like that start to develop you and you know it's going to need time, if you see that as a defender, you have to jump on that play immediately and not let it happen. That's the kind of running we see out of a Le'Veon Bell in the NFL. The patient, let the blocks develop, run, but you can't let the blocks develop if they're being blown out by the other team. Yeah, he didn't have much time to wait for anything to develop there. Kind of had to take that ball and just capitalize on it. Five receivers on the field, shotgun, empty set. It's third and ten from the 15. He's looking to pass. He's going to throw it out here, and it's just off the hands of his receiver, and I tell you, if he can corral that one, he might be able to run close to a first down. But just a little too much heat on it by Campos, and it just bounced off the hands. Campos has been throwing lasers all night. He's got to slow it down a little bit. Let that ball float if you got your receiver in that much open, open room. And I'm not sure if they're going to punt here. Looked like they were going to go for it for a second, and then... Uh, the John Harden... The John Harden... Uh, the coaching staff figured it out pretty quickly that they were uh, they were lining up like they were going to play it and then started lining up for a punt. So uh, great job by the John Harden coaching staff to see that developing. Boots this one away cleanly, and it's a bouncer, and it's going to go out of bounds on the Valley side of the field up here near the 45-yard line. And uh, we've seen that they keep throwing these short – they keep kicking these little short kicks – to try to keep it away from the electric Steven Livers. And you're just giving John Harden good field position, it seems. If I'm a special teams coach. I'm, I understand working. Be like, hey, I don't want to stick the ball to Livers. But you, if you're going to punt it, you've got to punt it downfield. You can't do 20, 30-yard punts when you're back in the 10, 15-yard line. Hey, we've been talking about this team all night. Zach Lasell catches the 35-yard pass from Malik Walters. Fort Knox leads Webster County 44-0. The minute 14 left in the game. I think we can go ahead and call that one for Fort Knox. Elizabethtown is up 40, or excuse me, 63 to nothing in the fourth. We've had a quarterback change for John Harden. And uh, it's Reinheimer. It's Reinheimer up the middle, and he's going to get about eight. And for a second there, I thought it was a quarterback keeper. And... Uh, Pickup of eight on the play. Very good. Very good to fake right there by John Harden because I thought that it was going to be a run by the quarterback. As they huddle up again. They, they've, they've gotten up to the 32-yard line. Look at Caleb. Caleb Fitzgerald coming in to play quarterback. Caleb Fitzgerald, we saw him a little bit in the Central Harden game, a little bit in the Meade County game. He's come in at quarterback. It's a run to the left side. He's got all kinds of room, but can't quite escape, and it looks like they might get a hold on that play. He was spinning and juking and trying to move all kinds of ways laterally, but never could cut it up field. A lot of room out there, but just couldn't quite seem to cut it up field. 
I'll tell you what, Drew. When you go to tackle somebody like that, you cannot tackle them at the chest with the shoulder pads. That's never going to bring down an elusive running back or receiver. You've got to wrap up those legs, take them down, stop them right there. Oh, Holding call oh, on the Bulldogs. That's going to back them up. They're going to be back near the the back near the 45 yard line, probably a little bit a little bit closer to the 42. Fitzgerald getting the call from the sideline. It's a little over nine minutes left in this fourth quarter. John Harden with the ball and a 14-point lead. They are on the plus side of the field at the 41-yard line. They've got second and 11. Fitzgerald's going to go under center with a single back look. Looks like Valley coming to bring a blitz here. Playing, yep. Valley brings the blitz. He rolls out to the right side, got his man, and it's just off the hands of his receiver. We've seen a lot of that tonight, Jesse. A lot of receivers with just open, can't quite squeeze that ball, can't quite get the ball in, but I think he might have heard footsteps behind him. He's lucky that corner went in for the tackle on that play. If he was a little bit slower, that tip pass, that's an interception every time. Yes, it is, and uh, when you're over there one-on-one -on -one with somebody and you get a tipped interception, unless that guy gets you down, you're going in for six. So another lucky play for John Harden because that ball did pop right up in the air, and that would have been easily intercepted. But the corner going for the tackle, not for the ball. Well, John Harden lines up here, give you another scoring update. Meade leads North Harden 26-21 with 6.20 left in the game. Meade County's out of timeouts in that game. Hope that doesn't come back to bite him. Fitzgerald is going to toss it out to the right side. That's Garrett. Garrett's got a first down, and he's going to be down inside the 25-yard line. A little bit of a leap there to get through those extra yards. Great job by Garrett of making the corner break down on the tackle and then taking advantage of the fact that he stopped his momentum. Yeah, that's, a, that's something you like to see out of a wide receiver, the ability to, to make a little break like that and get those extra yards. And Garrett did a wonderful job of it on that play. He's going to continue to be split out here to the right side. Keep an eye on him. That's number four at the bottom of your screen. Fitzgerald's going to go under center. He's got Reinheimer in the back. Keep an eye on number three, Stephen Livers. He's at the top of your screen. And it's going to be a... Run to Reinheimer, who's going to find tough sledding up the middle and only get up and get about two, maybe three yards on that run. The way this John Harden offense works, they run almost like a read option, and sometimes it's a little hard to follow. You see the the everybody moving over to the left side, and next thing you know, well, that run's gone up the middle, hasn't it, Jesse? They've done a really good job of that, of fooling the defense. And in the defense, you've got to read that. Um, one thing I'll say, John Harden's offense right now, take a look at the defense, playing really close to the line of scrimmage. You're lo loading the box like that. You've got some tired, worn-out corners. I wouldn't be surprised if John Harden tries to go deep a little bit on the second down. Yeah, that'd be the time to take a shot when, you, when you've kept it in. And look, they are going to spread them out. They're going to go in this pistol formation. Fitzgerald with Reinheimer behind him. He takes the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Reinheimer. Reinheimer making some room on the right side. He's going to be inside the 20 and out of bounds at around the 18-yard line. Got to be a little scared as offensive coordinator watching the running back take a couple steps back it's instead of three. forward. He's second and five, third and five. It's going to be third and five for the John Harden Bulldogs. Ball is right on the 20-yard line. you got to wonder if they take a shot here. Obviously, you're not worried about uh, you're not worried about two down football here. I don't think. I think maybe if you if you get it close to the to to it on on fourth down, you might take it. But at, at this point, you just want to play clock control. Yeah, you're still in field goal range at this point. You want to kind of go for a little bit, run the clock down. But worst case scenario, you still come out of here with to the run score. to the left side, and he's going to lose a bunch, and he's going to be back behind the, the original line of scrimmage and. Uh, that's not what you want to see if you're John Harden. You want to move that ball forward. And he did a little too much lateral movement there and a little too much backwards movement. And uh, it's going to make it fourth and 12 for this John Harden Bulldogs offense. Looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field. A little out of your operational range for a field goal. You don't want to punt it that close. So might as well take a shot, see what you can get. You're leading 30, 35 to 21. I take the shot on fourth down. Got Garrett down here. He's man on man. You got to wonder if Fitzgerald's going to look his way. He rolls to the right, and he's going to get sacked back at the 40-yard line. I think that's exactly what he was doing. He was looking Garrett's way as he rolled out to the right, 
and the pass rush got to him. Definitely a great read on that play to get that sack in that backfield. That's what you needed. This is an HCEC TV student production, a division of the Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, eTown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. So Valley, they've got the ball at their own 40-yard line, first and 10. They come out in that shotgun formation with four receivers split out. It's a throw all the way, and he's into the... It's out to his receiver on the right side, and he's going to be close to a first down. Forced out of bounds over there. you got to wonder if they're going to start taking some shots a little bit deeper down the field. Now, that was a uh, that was a flat route and just got his man in some open space and let him do the work, but you got to wonder if they're going to start taking some shots down the field. You're down by two touchdowns. 7.04 left in the fourth quarter. Is it time to hit the panic button? I don't think it's time to hit the panic button yet. Shotgun pass, and uh, he it's has no time. I might have to rephrase after that sack. Now you don't have nothing but a choice to go deep. Yeah, uh, a great pass rush all game long by this John Harden Bulldogs defense. And when you don't have time to set up those pass plays and let those routes develop, it, it makes up for the fact that maybe the Bulldogs – Secondary might be a little bit tired or, or might be a little bit tired of trying to play this man coverage and don't have to really worry about it when the quarterback's on his backside. Shotgun formation, four receivers split out on either side. He takes the snap, he looks, he's going to pump fake it, he's going to throw it, it's tipped, and that's going to go right into the ground after the tip. Campos has a tendency to get pretty close to that defense and offensive line when he's throwing the ball in the pocket. He needs to kind of back it up a little bit, give himself a little space to look over the line. He's not exactly as tall as Hobbs from Central Harden. No, not as tall as Hobbs at all. And, you know, like you said, he throws a very low ball. It's a it's a high-speed ball, but it's low. And all you have to do as a defensive lineman is reach that hand up, and that thing's going flying in all kinds of weird directions, you know. That oblong shape of the football makes for some interesting flying. So here we go, fourth and 11, ball on the 44-yard line. Campo's going to go in the shotgun. He's got four receivers split out and a protector to his right. Said John Harden played some deep zone here. John Harden. Here's the snap. Rush coming. Gets the ball away, and it's incomplete through the hands of the receiver. But even at that point, he was a half yard short of that first down marker of that lead stick. And uh, you got to wonder, you, you know, you got to be smart about that I, and, and not to say not to say anything about the value players but you you got to run a play that goes beyond that first down marker and uh, that was a very low pass and uh, even if he catches that it, it's going to be a turnover on downs because he was still at least a half a yard short of that lead stick it's been some great defensive coverage from from john harden kind of slowing valley's players like that but if i'm a wide receiver You've got to break away, get a little bit of coverage, help your quarterback make that play so he can look. Give him a reason to look further downfield. John Harden, single back formation. Going to send a man in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Reinheimer who finds a tough sledding. Two white shirts grabbed him and uh, slammed him down back on the other side of the 50. Of course, they're going to give him forward progress. He won't go all the way back behind the 50. It's going to be a loss of three on the play as we tick down inside of six minutes to go in this game. John Harden, though, not really anything to worry about. Even with a loss on that play, you've got a 14-point lead. The clock is your friend at this point. All you have to do is really just calm it down and, and, and run your offense. John Harden's going to go under center here. That's Caleb Fitzgerald as the running back. They send a man in motion. That's Livers. It's a pitch to Livers. Livers has got a lot of room over here on the right side. He's to the 30. They're going to get him for a holding call. This one's coming back, but he's going to break it up for a touchdown anyway. Flag on the play. we got to see what this is most likely on John Harden and coming back, but uh, an exciting play. Got a Valley got a, player down holding got a, onto his head a little bit. We've got a Valley player down. We've got a flag on the field. It is going to be a hold against John Three, Harden. Valley's number 24 is starting to come off the field under his own power. Uh, probably going to have a, an injury timeout here in just a moment. So while they are taking care of that, this is a Hardin County Schools, Educa Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCEC-TV 
is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. Locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe. And here we go, John Harden's coming out. Didn't have the timeout we were expecting. Caleb Fitzgerald's going to go under center with a single back. They send Livers in motion. It's the pitch. It's the same pitch. It's to the left side this time. Livers, though, not finding the same room he did. He's only going to gain about four, maybe five on that play. And uh, not the exciting break off that we saw there on the, on the last play that came back because of holding. But again, if you're John Harden, you have control of the ball. You have control of the clock. And then it's going to be third and 13 on the 45-yard line for this John Harden Bulldog offense. Jesse, we, we've talked about that the Valley defense might be might be a little banged up, might be a little bit tired. Do you think John Harden takes a shot here? Well, third and 13, I feel like you have to. You want to maintain possession of the ball so you can keep running that clock down. Take advantage it's of this Gerald weak side. under center. Going to hand it off to Reinheimer. Nope, he's going to hand it off to Livers, and Livers is going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring up fourth and well, ten. Nice. At this point, you're really outside of your operational field goal range. It looks like they are going to bring the punting unit on. And they're going to let them pump this ball away and try to pin the Valley Vikings down deep. With less than four minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, if you're Valley, you've got to get, the, you've got to get down there and score. You still have all your timeouts. You have... Again, less than four minutes to go. You're down by 14. Still got Fitzgerald lined up in the backfield as well. And a great spot by that. But we've got a flag, and it looks like it's going to be an offsides penalty. And now John Harden's going to go for this. Uh, a, a neutral zone infraction by Valley is going to make it suddenly it goes from 4th and 11 to 4th and about 6. And now they're going to line up to go for it on fourth and about five yards. Livers is out there. Garrett's out there. Caleb Fitzgerald running out to the huddle to give him the play. This is the point where I would expect John Harden to really take a shot at this. Uh, you're, you're in a situation where you can really put this one away. That's what I'm looking to do. I want one more touchdown. I want to kind of kill Valley's any kind of hopes they have left of scoring. And it's a pass out to the right side, a little screen pass. He's got a first down, it looks like. He's going to be inside the 20, inside down to the 15. He got clobbered down there at about the 16-yard line. What a play by the John Harden That's offense, great. getting those chains moving. And now you've got a fresh set of downs. Well, Clock will well, start after they, reset the, after they reset the ball. That's where we look for Reinheimer to run the ball a little bit more. Run that clock down. Take advantage of the first down near the red zone. Score update. Eric Moore to Josh Moore. Five yards. Rogerio PAT gives the Trojans a 29-26 lead. 4-23 left in the game. North Harden and Meade County always seem to have these close games. Very good game right there. They've got look like a lot of good games going on tonight, except for E-Town there. That's, that's a blowout again by E-Town Panthers. Here's the snap, and it's going to be a throw to the end zone and a wide open Garrett touchdown Bulldogs, and I think that just put it away for the Bulldogs. What a play. It was perfectly done. A play action pass. Fitzgerald floated it to the end zone, and Josh Garrett was wide open. I'm going to make it 41-21 with the extra point pending, and uh, I believe that's the dagger in the heart of the Valley Vikings. I think that's about all she wrote there, but you remember us talking earlier about just wearing them down. Run, run, and run down the throat of Valley. Good snap, good hold, good kick. Take advantage of that open possession. He had a wide-open receiver standing in the end zone. 21 unanswered points. In the second half for John Harden, they take a 42-21 lead, doubling up the Valley Vikings. 3-0-3 left in the fourth quarter. It's a Harden County Educational and Community Television student production. HCEC-TV is a division of Harden County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all of your telecommunication needs. 
Physical Therapy Associates more personal attention for more effective results. With locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, Brandenburg, Bardstown, and Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. eTownApartments.com by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at eTownApartments.com. Jesse, it's been an interesting second half. It's been a, a game where we saw John Harden and Valley trade back and forth to start the game. And now, here we have John Harden scoring 21 unanswered points in the second half. If you're Valley, you still have a slim hope. But you have to score three times in three minutes. Well, Tom Brady's not back there playing quarterback. For, I'm not that sure is not how Tom Brady. I feel about three touchdowns in three minutes. That is not Tom Brady. That's not Gavin Spurrier. It's it's not anybody that uh, of name. Big kick here, and it's going to go deep. It's going to be taken by Valley at about the 15-yard line. Little fakery. He's around to the 20, but uh, John Harden not fooled by the uh, by the trickery there. A little gadget play that uh, did not have the desired result. Uh, we, we like to say on here, well, that's how you drew it up. Well, that is not how you drew it up. No, you had a lot more opening on that far side of the field. He should have maintained that position of that ball, just taking it a little bit further. He was looking at a wide open field, at least make it to the 40 or 50 on that play. And, you know, sometimes you just take a shot at that. You, you want to try to do something. You've got to get something to get the momentum on your side. But, um, uh, man, just a, a rough, rough kickoff return. And now 2.55 left. They're going to start on their own 23-yard line. The long field challenge for the Valley Vikings has been a challenge the entire game. Drew, can the offensive line give him give uh, Campos enough time in the pocket this time? I don't know. That John Harden Bulldog pass rush has been just eating them alive. Here goes a quick pass out to the right side. He's at the 25 to the 30. He's got a little bit of room, 40, 45, and brought down at the 45-yard line, and we just asked, is that – doesn't matter when you're going to do a little swing pass out to the left side. Great offensive play by the Valley Vikings. They'll be up near midfield, and and that's the kind of the way you draw it up. But now, if you're Valley, you've got to get a little bit of urgency. It is now time to hit the panic button. You can't just muddle, huddle around. You can't be looking over the sideline. You've got to keep this momentum going, keep this tempo going. Locke is not your friend at this point. That was Lazaro James on the run. Also, look, you got Kobe Hickson ball sitting Bad right snap. now. And it is picked up by Valley, and they will lose a couple of yards on that play, but not near as much of a disaster as that could have been. It was a low snap, kind of bounced off the shins of, of the quarterback, Campos, and um, bad exchange, bad snap, bad everything on that play. Valley's just worn down now. And you look, they're, they're, here they are. They're huddling again, and time ticking off the clock. We're at 2.20 right now. Valley, if they're going to do this, they're going to have to start making some shots down the field. Well, I think at this point it's Valley. You, you don't expect to come back. You at least try to go out on a good note and play some, play some positive offense that you haven't done in the first. It's a run off the left side, and uh, John Harden having none of that as we go down within two minutes to go. I believe Valley has decided to live to play another day. Um, they, uh, they're they down by 21. We're inside two minutes left to go. And here they are huddling on the field. Yeah, I, I believe the the hopes of a Valley comeback have been dashed by this John Harden defense and offense uh, here in the second half. If I'm the Valley coach, I want to sit down, see what we worked on in the first half that worked and was executed so well, and see why we didn't do it again in the second half coming out of halftime. Shotgun formation, he's going to drop, throw across the middle, and I believe that one may have skipped in. Looking for the uh, for the call here, and they're, they're going to give it to him. Uh, I believe that one might have skipped off the ground. We don't have the benefit of instant replay here. Uh, we don't have all the, the fancy gadgets that the NFL or, or college football have, and they're going to come up to the line, fourth down and short. I'd like to go back and watch that one, though, if I could. Under center, he's going to rush forward and get that first down, dragging people, dragging the pile with him to the 40, and then it will stop the clock until they get everything reset. Campos is taking some damage tonight. I'm not sure I want to wear my quarterback down that much with under two minutes in this game. Timeout called by Valley. 
when we're in the timeout, I'll remind you that this is an HCEC TV student production, a division of the Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors, Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Bluegrass Cellular, eTown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. I am Drew Bernardi. With me tonight, Jesse Bird. David Gary was with us earlier on Play by Play. On camera one tonight, Jazlyn Barnes on camera two, Alex Greer, audio Tacoma Yohala, graphics Gabe Stolkup, student director Sabrina Bergman, and director is CJ Carroll. 52.4 seconds left in this one. John Harden is ahead, 42 to 21. Valley, though, is driving there at the John Harden 40-yard line. And if anything's going to happen, it's going it's to happen on these next couple of plays. Well, just like we've got a finish coming up to this game, we had a finish in for Elizabethtown. They defeated Adair County 63-0. Shotgun formation on this one. He's got four receivers split out, and John Harden didn't like the look of something. They are going to call a timeout, and we're right back to where we were just a second ago on the timeout. Jesse, this game started off a little bit differently than we expected it to. Uh, Valley came out. They played hard. We, we, we kind of expected that it was going to be uh, a lot of John Harden tonight. It has been in the second half, but in the first half, Valley was trading shots back and forth. We went into halftime tied 21 all. John Harden came out in the second half, and uh, they decided that they wanted to take control of this game, and they certainly did. John Harden cut down on those mistakes. I mean, you had some penalties coming out, but as far as they had several drop passes, they're also utilizing their playmakers a lot more in the second half. And it's just been more of a weakness from Valley's defense to let them do that. I mean, they shut down the playmakers a little bit in the first half, and you, you give them the opportunity to score, and they're going to do it. This is a John Harden team that has been up and down all year. They are 3-4. and four. They've had some games where they put a lot of points on the board. This one is going to look really good on film in the second half. Uh, first half is going to show a lot of things they need to work on. If we come out of the timeout, it's going to be a shotgun formation with four receivers, two split out on either side. Campos working with a protector to his right. Now he's going to motion him up forward a little bit. Takes the snap. He's going to be throwing no matter what. Big rush coming. He's going to take off running. He tucks the ball, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. Leaves 45 seconds left on the clock. Good job by the John Harden corner coming in to not attempt to tackle on, it, on that of bounds right there. Yeah, a good attempt there because that's an easy way to get a personal foul penalty that gives them 15 free yards and a free first down. You definitely don't want to do that. Um, if you're Valley tonight, it's another rough game. You're, you're going to fall now to 1-6. and six. If you're John Harden, you're back to 500. You're 4-4, four and four, and you look a lot better than you did you know, last week, a 49-13 to 13 loss against Louisville Western. You had a 27-12 to 12 loss at, at, uh, against Central Harden here at Bulldog Stadium. We were on that game. Um, if you're a Valley, you still have a lot to work on. Well, one thing you can look at in a Valley, a little bit of an upswing. And say this is a third four-game stretch. You go from zero points scored to six points to 13 points last week. A little and trickery out to the right side. He's got a lot of room, and he'll get near a first down. Great open field tackle by the John Harden Bulldogs defense because he just about broke that one out. It was a little short pass with a little lateral. 36.9 seconds is going to be left on the clock, but a, another great open field tackle by the John Harden defense. We've, said that we've seen this several times. Drew, if you're a Valley coach, are you happy about the upswing and the points being scored? I think you are. He's going to push it forward, get a first down, uh, sneak right up the middle, but if you're John Harden, you're keeping him on his feet as long as you can mm -hmm. burn some more of that clock off. 32.2 left on the fourth quarter clock. If you're John Harden, you're walking out of here with a win. If you're Valley, you may walk out of here with a loss, but you, you walk out with your head held a little bit higher. You know, you mentioned it, an upswing of points. Um, you're, you're talking about a Valley team that has, that's been outscored quite a few times. Here's the snap on the shotgun play. He's going to throw it out to the left side. He's got a playmaker. He's inside the 20, inside the 15, bouncing off tacklers, spin move inside the 10, and that's going to be first and goal for Valley with just under 20 seconds left. And they're going to run up, rush up to the they're going to rush up to the line here, try to get a snap off because as soon as that ball's set, that clock restarts. 
He takes the snap. He looks. He waits. He fires. That's a touchdown for the Valley Vikings. Oh, they're going to feel a little bit better about this one. They were doubled up before that. 10.6 left on the game clock. Touchdown from Campos. And uh, what a play. Well, Drew, I believe that was the drive down the field they needed at the beginning of the second half. Yes, Several that was. Times. That, was, that is the drive they have needed several times today, and uh, John Harden was not letting them have it at all until what they call garbage time. Uh, John Harden has already sealed up this victory. Valley, now well, that that gives them a little bit more, uh, a little bit more confidence going into next week's game to to put four touchdowns up when their previous best was just 13 points. They lined up for the extra point. Snap is a little high. Gets it down. That kick is good 28 42 is now is good. your score with 10.6 left 10.6 seconds, seconds, seconds left we'd like to give a final shout out to our sponsors Brandenburg Telecom providing service for all your telecommunication needs West Point Bank five offices located in Elizabethtown Radcliffe Upton Glendale and West Point find them online at westpointbank.com E-Town Exterminating, 737-6900, online at mugabug.com. Bluegrass Cellular, offering the most affordable unlimited plan anywhere where wireless works. Visit at bluegrasscellular.com. E-Town Apartments by Mark Harris Construction. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. Big thanks to Jesse Bird. Big thanks to all of our crew here tonight. David Gary, who was on with us earlier. Big thanks to our camera guys. We've got Jaslyn Barnes and Alex Greer on the cameras. Takuma, Takuma Yohala on audio. Graphics is Gabe Stolkup. Student director is Sabrina Bergman. The director is CJ Carroll. Again, big thanks to David Gary, who was here doing play-by-play -play earlier. Jesse Bird, who was our spotter and turned into our play-by-play -play guy. I'm Drew Bernardi. We've got 10.6 seconds left in here. I believe Valley is going to go ahead and attempt the onside kick. Um, I think at your best shot here is to recover it and maybe score one more touchdown before we get out of here. Um, well, if you score one more touchdown, you're looking at a positive note. Total points for the season prior to this game, Valley Station at 33 points scored. Tonight, 28. 28 points tonight. That is a, almost as many as they've scored all season. So if you get one more touchdown, you'll have bested your entire season total. And here comes the onside kick. Nope, it's going to be a deep ball that's going to go bounce inside the 10. And it's going to bounce out of bounds, I believe. We've got a flag on the play. So I believe that that is the final gasp for Valley. John Harden will come out of here, come out here in the victory formation. And they are going to, it is going to be a kick off out of bounds. It's going to put John Harden with good field position. Not that it matters. They're going to kneel this one down. Get out of here with a victory. If you're John Harden, you've just snapped a short skid after a blowout loss to Louisville Western last week. You're you're back to 500, which is where you want to be. You, you've now won another district game. If you're Valley, you've lost another district game, or you've, you're now 1-1 one one in the district. Here's the kneel down from Caleb Fitzgerald, and that's going to do it for this game. Your final score, the John Harden the Bulldogs, 42, the Valley Vikings, 28. Jesse, do you have any final score updates for us? Well, let's check it out and see what we got going on. Looks like we had a pick six to end the game, and North Harden defeats Meade County.